Detroit High School Hockey Tournament what it is. Bob Utech standing by across the ice. Bob? We are ringside at the St. Paul Civic Center, and this building is filled up with excitement and fans. And tonight's game for the South Suburban Championship, literally between the Jaguars of Jefferson and Edina's Hornets. Believe you me, this is going to be super high school hockey. And we're going to have Dean Talifus as a guest coming along later, and we're going to have Mike Cowan, the Wisconsin editor. So now, up to Bob Bruce, and we're going to get on with the action. And we will have first period action for you in just a moment. This is the 1982 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. You're looking at the two best reasons I take good care of my brakes. They're why I go to Midas on a regular basis. Midas inspects brakes the right way. I pull the wheel. If anything needs doing, I know it gets done right. Some people say I'm overly cautious, but I don't think so. I just feel better going to Midas. When nothing but the best is ever gonna do, trust the Midas touch. The Bobby Smith Kemp's Ice Cream Hockey Clinic. Every hockey player must be able to pass the puck. Dino, let's try a few. On the forehand pass, make it smooth. Don't slap it. When receiving the pass, the puck should be cradled into the stick. It's the same on the backhand. Handle the puck smoothly and keep your hands away from your body. After the forehand and the backhand pass, then we switch to the fun stuff. The Bobby Smith Kemp's Ice Cream Hockey Clinic has been brought to you by Kemp's, makers of Kemp's Ice Cream. A month at a time, you can build a retirement fortune with the help of an IRA at TCF. You can also reduce the taxes you pay now. A retirement fortune a month at a time, even on a modest income. In 30 years, you could easily have a half a million dollars. Maybe you think that's a long time to save. 30 years of not saving is just as long, and you end up with nothing. IRA at TCF, the sure way to build up a retirement fortune a month at a time. We've uncovered an economic fuel for heating, your own body heat. At NSB's North Star Home, we found if existing heat plus warmth from the sun could be sealed inside, we could heat this house for less than $155 a year. We did it with features like double outer walls with a foot of insulation and an air exchanger that returns heat from exhausted air. NSB's North Star Home, finding ways to use the heat you have right at your fingertips. live at the St. Paul Civic Center just seconds away from the introductions of tonight's starting lineups of this first of two semifinal games that we have for you. It'll be Bloomington Jefferson, of course the Jaguars in the lighter jerseys and as you see there, Edina in the dark jerseys tonight. First the starting lineup for the Edina Hornets, the champions out of section six. Starting in goal for the Hornets, Kevin Galbraith in goal, 5'10", 195 pounds, a senior. Andy Cassid also starting tonight on defense, 6 feet, 185 pounds, a senior. Then Bill Brower, he's the other defenseman, 6'3", 200 pounds, a senior. And Dave Maley also starting tonight, center, 6'2", 195 pounds, a senior. Brian Cutshaw, 6 feet, 180 pounds, a senior. And then John DeVoe, number 18, six foot two, 175 pounds, a senior, and of course the head coach Willard Eichela, the assistant coach Bart Larson. And from section five, Bloomington Jefferson, the Jaguars. Starting in coal, number one, John Swanson. He played a great game yesterday, six two, 200 pounds, and quick as a cat, a senior. On defense, Rob Ono, very talented player, 5'10", 170 pounds, he is a senior. Jim Guess also on defense, 6'3", 195 pounds, a junior. And what a player this young man is. Steve Bianchi at center, 5'8", 150 pounds, a senior. Rounding out the lineup, Terry Sullivan in the wing, 5'9", 175 pounds, a junior. And of course, Kyle Kranz, who scored the winning goal for Bloomington Jefferson the other day, a winger, 5'11", 170 pounds, he is a senior. And the head coach, of course, is Tom Satterdolan. Dr. Earl Benson leads us in the Star Spangled Banner.
national anthem as played by the Bloomington Jefferson Jaguar Band, directed by Urban Rottenberry. We are just about ready for the start of our first semifinal game. Here are the referees for tonight's game. We saw them yesterday, Terry Abram and William Hawking. Here's the goalie matchup for tonight, of course. John Swanson, number one for Bloomington Jefferson on the right. And of course, Edina, they alternate goalies. Kevin Galbraith in goal tonight. In the first game, of course, for Edina, it was Jim Lazinski. But Galbraith getting his chance tonight to taste some tournament action. One thing, Bob, one of those referees, Terry Abrams, he's played in this tournament, he's coaching this tournament, now he's a referee in this tournament. One of the real fine hockey players developed in the state of Minnesota out of South St. Paul. He's almost like the King Clancy of high Kelly. school hockey in Minnesota. You could say he's <laughs> done it all. <laughs> Well, we're just about ready for the first period of action. It's the defending champion, Bloomington Jefferson, against Edina. And, of course, to call the play-by-play -play of the first period, here's Al Shaver. The white uniforms defending the goal to our right, Jefferson, the defending state champions. In the dark green uniforms to our left, Edina, as the puck comes into the neutral zone from the faceoff. Maley couldn't get a stick on it. It's cleared to the near boards and now shot in by John DeVoe. Picked up now by Big Guess. Jim Guess at center, firing it down the ice. It rings the boards back at Galbraith, winding up in the right corner, a pass up the boards. The Jaguars trying to hold it in, but the Hornets tip it out to center now. This is Maley with the puck down the right side, over the line, into the left circle, forced to the boards by Guess, back to the point. The shot by Cassid is right on. And the first save of the game kicked out by Swanson. Puck back in the neutral zone, shot in off the near boards by Brower. Now he gets it back at the blue line. Brower, a rink-wide pass to the left, and a relay is picked off. And now Bianchi firing it in to the left corner, then heading for the bench as they change on the fly. Back of the goal, Brower feeding to the left wing boards. The horn is trying to come out. Broken up, but the puck dribbles out to center away from Graham, and he couldn't control it in the zone. Now it's shot back to the Edina blue line, broken up by Michael Bust. Now Cassid firing it in, and now he and Brower are going to the bench for relief as they've made their first complete changes in the night. Tucked back in the Jefferson zone to the left, a feed to the right point, Razout to the left point. Now there's a shot by Baker. Wide to the left, off the traffic in the slot. The feed back to the point is picked off, broken up at center on a fine diving save by Chapman. The puck back in the Jefferson zone to the right of the goaltender, Carroll. Is checked in the corner by Kelly. Comes back to the net, and the centering pass is smothered at the edge of the crease by John Swanson, lying on his back and all stretched out there. Well, Wally Chapman had a nice feed out of the corner from Carroll. He got it away quickly. It looked like it was by uh, goaltender Swanson, but it hit the pipe. Here's Carroll in the corner, centering that puck to Chapman. He got it away real fast. Watch it hit the pipe right there and come back out. Way underway in the Jefferson zone. The puck comes out of the left circle, cleared around behind the net by Beatty. Now Vacanti fires it around behind for the Hornets. And the near side, Roth trying to get it back to the point to Rizzuti. Rink whites to Baker at the left point. Fires it around on the boards. A centering pass comes right in front by Roth. And Guess now clears it around to the right wing side. Gets a return pass on a drop from Getters. Guess comes back of the net to the left side. Feeding on the wing now and trying to work it out as racer, but it comes to the point. Rizzuto, a long shot, goes wide to the right. And on the far side, oh no, it's flattened by Bacardi. The puck comes back out into the neutral zone. Baker to his defense partner, Rizzuto, who fires it in. It's on the net. Swanson makes the save and elects to smother it for a faceoff. There's a break in the action with the score. The Edina Hornets nothing and the Jefferson Jaguars nothing. The Minnesota State Hockey Tournament is brought to you by your nearby Northland Ford dealer. Stop in and see his class of 82. EXP Escort Mustang in the new Mustang GT. Face off to Swanson's left. It'll be Mealy against Bianchi as they're back to the starting lines again. It's back to DeVoe. John DeVoe up high and off the glass. Now Brower from the far boards firing. It goes back of the net off a of skate. In the right corner, the puck coming loose now. Kutchell putting it back in the corner. This is Maley coming back of the net to Swanson's left, into the corner, into the circle, still in possession, comes back near the line, had to dump it back in. He was almost out of the zone, a centering pass. And it's picked up on the right side and fed out by Sullivan. Bianchi at center, tied up. And back in come the Hornets on the attack. 
Here's Kutchell in the right corner. Got turned around by Bianchi. Now Sullivan moves in to help out along with Kelly. And they freeze it for a face-off to Swanson's right. Well, you wonder what goes through the kids' heads. They've played each other twice during the season. Edina beat uh, Jefferson twice, one 6 3 one 4 2 You wonder if Edina was going to come in overconfident. Or you wonder if he, uh, Jefferson was going to be somewhat uh, in awe of Edina because they had been beaten twice. But these things usually go by the wayside in the tournament. We're underway at the right point. A shot hit the traffic in the slot enough. Drive from Cassid, who has it now at his blue line across to Brower on the left. He feeds a pass. It's blocked in the center zone. But Ono goes down, and now on the right side, the puck driven in. John DeVoe gloved by Swanson. It would have been off the net. He clears it in behind. Head around on the left side by Chris Graham. He gets a return pass now from Feldman that goes off his stick, and it's shot back in by Brower. Swanson missed the cutoff behind the net. In the left corner, Guess head manning. It deflects away from Feldman, but now he gets a return pass from Racer. Moves in over the line, drops it back. It's shot down to the right corner. Coming back of the net, Feldman to the left corner. Feeds the right point position. They drive by Ono, and it grazes the left side of the goal. Centering attempt is blocked at the right side of the net. It comes to the near boards, and now Razut is chased back of the goal by Feldman. Comes to the left side, stops as Feldman was over there covering. Razut comes in behind to check the traffic situation. Feeds Chapman on the left. Bounces off a check. Feeds the puck out to center ice now. And Carroll comes in on the attack trying to get by. Oh, no. Fires from a sharp angle. And he got it on the net. Swanson making the save. Puck cleared to the line. Baker holding it in. Bellman tried to clear and failed. Now it's poked out to center by Graham. And the puck shot on into the Dyna zone with the Hornets coming back to regroup. Still no score as they approach the five-minute mark in the opening period. A long pass going the length of the ice, but it was off a skate in the neutral zone. They're waving any icing call. And now on the attack is Terry Racer. Over the line, comes through the defense, fires as he runs into the closed door, and it's turned aside to the left. A centering pass, beating a shot, knocked down. And so is he. And back come the Hornets on the attack. In over the blue line to the right of the goal. Brower loses the puck. It's shot around behind the net. Kelly is after with Bacconi. They bump along the boards. They go down. And a third man falls over top of them. As Beatty ran into the heap, we'll have a face-off in the Bloomington zone to the right. There's a break in the action. The score. Bloomington Jefferson, nothing. Edina, nothing. Stone Wings offers those little personal touches that only private ownership can bring. Valet parking, reservations, and even a sit-down Sunday brunch. Stone Wings, Bloomington. On the face-off to the right of the Jefferson goal. We're scoreless. The puck cleared to center. Brower, a rink-wide pass, almost picked off by Kranz. And now it is picked up and brought in by the Jaguars. This is Guest. Runs into traffic. Fires long and wide to the left. On the far side, Sullivan along the boards loses to Bacotti, but it comes back to the right point now. Ono holding it in to Bianchi. He's checked by Brower. Brower jams him along the boards. Bianchi falls, feeds the right point, but it goes off Ono and into the Dyna bench. And we'll have a faceoff just uh, at the blue line or just outside. And Steve Bianchi might be small, but he keeps coming up with the puck along the boards. He's got great balance, and he gets inside, and he's able to get it back to the point, and quite a few times for this Jefferson team. Bianchi against Neely. Neely pulls the draw back to Razut. He's left. Now to Neely. Off his stick, it comes out to center. Covered there by DeVoe. Now Sullivan on the far side chops at it. It comes back to the blue line, and this is Razut on the right side. A long pass comes through to Swanson. Steers it up to the right circle. Ono back of the net, clears to Sullivan on the right side. A headman pass got by Bianchi. Razut fanned on it as he tried to tap it ahead. Here's Kranz cranking up for a shot, and he puts it wide off the glass in the left corner. Puck picked up. Baker failed to get out as the Jaguars put the pressure on, but it's broken up by Baker as Sullivan couldn't keep control. Back to the point. Ono failed to hold it in, but keeps possession in the neutral zone. Now shoots it in. Sullivan was offside, but they clear in the wave the offside call. It shot right back in by Kranz. Behind the net, Razut picking it up with 8.40 remaining in the period. The feed on the right side. John DeVoe stolen away nicely. In the corner, centering attempt by Graham. Off a stick, and it comes to the goaltender, Galbraith, who clears to his left. It's cleared off the boards. 
Back into the Jaguar zone. Jefferson back now behind the net. It's cleared around to the left by Holstein. Tuck coming out into the neutral zone. Cassette at his blue line passing to the opposite blue line. Off the mark for Carroll. Holstein back to the right of Swanson. Bringing it around on the left wing side. And it's fed on out to center now. Picked up in the neutral zone by Michael Buss. But he loses on a good steal to Chapman. Shakes off one check. Then runs into Holstein and loses the puck. It's cleared to center ice. Now Chapman couldn't control a high pass that hit him on the body. Now he steals it on the far side off Graham and his pass to the blue line picked off by Holstein. Holstein head manning and Michael Bust relays it into the Edina zone and then heads for the bench as they change. Kassid with the puck back of the net. Heads up the right side now for DeVoe. This is uh, Mike DeVoe on now. His pass hit the traffic at the blue line. It comes back into the Dyna zone. Man open in front, Beatty. But the play was broken up by Cassid. Now it's back to the blue line. Oh, no, with a drive. And he slides to the right with it. Still no score as DeVoe headmans to center. Carroll relays it in. And now the Hornets make a wholesale change on the fly as five new men come on. Oh, no, with a long pass on the left side. It was too far for the winger racer. It's played back into the neutral zone. McCarthy's pass comes right up the slot to the goaltender Swanson. And Swanson smothers it at the front edge of the crease. We'll have a face-off in the Bloomington zone. There's a break in the action with the score. Edina nothing, Bloomington nothing. Blair, incredible ice machines. Face off to the right of Long John Swanson. <laughs> Love those big goaltenders. Like the old Long John oh. Henderson, right? Long John, yeah, remember him? Yeah. He is a he big one, too. playing for the Bruins. Now the puck comes back to the right point. Razut beating it through the traffic and blocking. Now here's Hochstein trying to work out through the traffic at center right. Hochstein at the Adina line comes to the near boards. He's jammed there and a good takeout by Razut. It's held in as it was poked ahead now by Kranz in the right circle. McCarthy after it. It comes to the goaltender, and Galbraith taps it away to the right corner. Razut tying up the Jefferson player with the puck as he jams Bianchi. Ties him up for a faceoff, which will come to the right of Galbraith. Bianchi, one of the more dangerous players on the Jefferson team. As a matter of fact, he was one of the outstanding players in yesterday's play. Puts a good move on the defenseman here as he slides it through and he goes towards the goaltender. Gilbert, of course, standing in good position, was able to just sweep that puck aside as Bianchi was breaking in for a shot. Back to live action now. This is John DeVoe banking it in off the boards, but he's felled by a hip check by Guess. Now it's back in the left corner. Fellman is pulled over, but he has some help and is picked up and brought out to center ice now. In over the Edina line. It is Michael Bus moving into the near corner. Forced back of the goal by Cassid. Feeds the right point. Ono with a shot that hit the traffic in front. It goes into the right corner. Cleared up the right wing boards. DeVoe at the blue line. Poked it out to center. Picks it up again. Now for Maley. In over the blue line. Man coming on the left. Cut shot, but he couldn't get the pass through. And one of the Jefferson players has gone flying into the goal and uplifted it. And let's see, it's uh, Chris Graham who's uh, picking himself out of the webbing like a fish who just got hauled out of the ocean. Lou, nice defensive play out front by Ono there to slap that puck out of the, in front of the net. Excellent play. Okay, there's a break in the action. The score, Bloomington Jefferson nothing, Edina nothing. The Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament is brought to you in part by Wendy's Restaurant. Ain't no reason to go anyplace else. Convenient locations throughout the Twin Cities. Well, that was, uh, as Bob was just saying, just an excellent play by Ono. He was outnumbered. Maley was trying to feed that pass across, and Ono got perfect position, stood right in between Maley and the line mate cuts all coming down, and when the pass was attempted, he just knocked it away. As a matter of fact, here's the play coming up. As a matter of fact, he almost was able to go up ice, but... Uh, his teammate had crashed, Graham had crashed into the net. There he is right there, taking that pass right away from Cutsall. It was open. A good try by Maley. Fine play by Ono. Fortunately, these uh, nets don't have the real deep pipes like the pros do, and that's why they get off, knocked off very easily, but at least no one gets hurt. Puck cleared to center out of the Jefferson zone. Now Razut firing it back in. It's deflected down and cleared out by Hochstein on the right side. Attack underway now, moving in. Getters trying to get by Baker. Getters goes down after Baker's had lost his balance. And now back of the net, we have Baker 
running into Dave Beatty. Beatty was going into the boards. One leg was actually uh, caught in a very funny position. Fortunately, he wasn't hit too hard on that. Lou, you had a glimpse of one of our cameras that we have high up in the ceiling of the Civic Center, and we'll have some very interesting replays from that camera. I'm sure throughout the two games that we have for you tonight. We'd like to be able to play the game from that height. <laughs> Everything looks a little easier. From the face off, the puck back to the point. A blast by Ono is wide to Galbraith's right. Now Rizout dumping it out as he was bumped by Bianchi. Puck is shot back in, and we are going to have a delayed offside called. There's a break in the action. The score. The Edina Hornets, nothing. And the Jefferson Jaguars of Bloomington, nothing. Motorcraft 10W40, super premium motor oil, now just 69 cents with five-quart purchase and Motorcraft rebate at all Kmart stores. Motorcraft oil, just 69 cents at Kmart. Here comes Kranz on his off wing to Sullivan. Let's go. Tried to put it through and hit a defenseman skate and comes to the near board. Members of both teams after it. That went off Razut skate. Now it's back to the right point. Ono firing. He's wide to the left. It comes off the boards and becomes lodged in the mesh behind Galbraith. And that'll call for a faceoff outside the blue line. We're down to 5-10 remaining in a scoreless first period. Well, two defensemen now making fine plays. Ono for Jefferson and right there Razut for Edina. And they're in an outnumbered situation, blocking that good pass through. The Yankees line is playing every other shift, by the way. They're using them quite a bit. They might get tired by the time you get in the third period. I don't know if they'll continue that all the way through. From the faceoff, back in the neutral zone, this is Hochstein cranking up from the blue line. A shot. Galbraith steers it to the boards on his left now. And it is picked up and cleared by McCarthy. It got by Kelly. He skates it down back at his blue line. Overpasses Hochstein, but the puck back out at center. And now Kassid chasing it inside the Edina line. And he clears it out off the far boards. But Conti relays it on down the ice. And Tom Kelly skates it down behind Swanson. Comes to the left side. Head manning to Fellman now. Fellman giving it back to Kelly. Here's Kelly to Michael Bus. Banks it in off the boards to the right of the goal. Back of the net. Cleared to the left by Brower, picked up by Brower. Brower head manning to center now. Relay to the right for Roth on a pass from McCarthy. Roth with a shot, and Swanson steers it away to his right. Graham in the corner with Kelly. The puck comes loose to Michael Buss. Michael Buss setting sail at center, firing it in, and then wheeling for the bench on a change. To Sid back for the puck. Up the right side to Roth. Roth tried to relay it, but Beatty cuts it off at center. He was trying to get it through to cut shell, and Beatty fires it in. Brower to the left of Galbraith. Pass on the left side. Got by Cutshell. The Jaguars hold it in. Fed down into the right corner. Along the near boards. Beatty dumping it now. Getters tried to put it in front. It's picked off. Cleared to the right side. Broken up by Racer. But we have a, a stoppage as the goal is off the post again. As we were saying, Al, uh, talking about that a little further. In high school hockey, they use very little pegs on the post. So when the net sits in there, if someone runs into it, it's going to come off its moorings and not stand so firm and someone get hurt. In professional hockey, they have higher pins, and occasionally you've seen people break their legs running into that net. I think it's a real good idea. From the faceoff to Galbraith's right, the puck is brought out by John DeVoe. He's tied up by Guest, and the Jaguars get it. It's shot right back in by Getters. Now cleared by Baker to center ice. Puck comes to the Jefferson blue line. Getters has it on the far side. Plays it past Baker. It winds up back at Galbraith who cuts it off. Here comes Baker up to the right of his goaltender. Headman's a pass. It's banked out by John DeVoe. Maley couldn't get possession as he reached back forward and it's shot in by Kranz now. This is Rizout behind the net. Tommy Rizout into the right corner for Baker. Baker rink wide off the board. Picked up at center ice. Over the blue line, they come with Maley. Into the right of the goal, tried to center. It was deflected back of the net. Now it's shot around to the right side, and Sullivan picks it up. Sullivan bringing it to center for the Jaguars. Dumps it into the Hornets zone. Bianchi goes down, and a defender falls on top of him. We are going to have our first penalty of the hockey game. Time of the penalty will be 12-14. You'll have a tripping call here, Baker, as he was going around the outside on him. Baker just reached out and knocked his feet out from under him. You see in this play, Sullivan cutting to the outside, uh, feeding that pass to the outside there, and Bianchi going outside, and there's Baker right there reaching around behind him, knocking Bianchi's skates out, 
Jefferson on the first power play of the night with the score of zero to zero. Dave Baker in the penalty box. Power play attempt for Jefferson moving in left point. Here's a drive right on by Bianchi and it's gloved and held by Galbraith. Bianchi back at the left point on the power play. Michael Buss taking the draw at center. One thing Jefferson should do if they're going to be shooting from the point like that, somebody's got to get in front to screen goaltender Galbraith. McCarthy taking the face off for Edina. Sullivan to Bianchi. Skating laterally to the right. Now back to Michael Buss. Right circle. His shot goes back of the net off the glass. It comes out to the right point. As it's held in now, far corner, Kranz back to Bianchi into the right circle. Michael Buss making the turn with it. Now back to Bianchi. To Michael Buss. To Bianchi. Off the handle of the stick. Hit the goaltender stick on the handle. Michael Buss with a shot. And another save by Galbraith. The puck along the boards to his right now. Michael Buss digs it out as Sullivan helped him. Michael Buss moving into the circle to Sullivan beside the net. Coming to the circle. Back to the point. Oh, no, with a drive. And it was saved by Galbraith. But we have a whistle on the play and an illegal advancement of the puck. One thing uh, Jefferson did right there, Sullivan especially, he was holding the puck beside the net on Galbraith. He had everybody, two defensemen and one of the Edina forwards, coming back towards him. As soon as he collapsed the front of that box, he passed that puck back out to the point, and that defenseman was able to get a good shot. Good play by Sullivan there. Play underway as the puck is cleared. 103 left in the penalty time on Dave Baker. This is Guess. Head back to the right point. Held in by Ono to Bianchi. Now a centering pass from Fellman. Right on with a shot. It's back to the point. Here's Ono cranking up another shot. Hit a defender, and here comes DeVoe. John DeVoe over the Jefferson blue line with Maley. DeVoe with a shot. And it hits Swanson and rebounds to his left. Still 30 seconds left in the Edina penalty. Jaguars on the power play with Bianchi. Bianchi goes to his right to get by a sweep check from DeVoe. Now he runs into Maley, passes off on the play, it's relayed to the left, it hit Guess on the skate, and Cassid drives it back into the Bloomington zone. But we have an offside call with 101 remaining. The referee blew the whistle because he said Ono closed his hands on the puck, and so he blew the whistle right there. I, uh, I think he's getting a little carried away in that one. A real fine display of goaltending, by the way, by Kevin Gilbert made three big saves. Louis, you look right there. One of the best hockey coaches this state has ever seen, without a doubt. Willard Eichela. He's been here so many times. He must wear that houndstooth cap, cap about like Bear Bryant in college football. I hope it's not the same one. Puck shot in by Cassid. Rounding the net with it now is Hochstein. Got by the sweep from Carroll. Headman's on the left to Kranz. In over the blue line. Try to centering pass. Block, but Kranz gets it back. Feeds the left point now. Held in by Hochstein. The penalty has expired. A long shot, and Carroll covers it as Sullivan falls over top of him. Galbraith making the save. And we'll have a faceoff to his right with 40 seconds left in the first period. Jefferson having far and away the better chances, especially since that power play when they had three real good chances. But neither team, up until that power play, were taking too many shots. They were overpassing, getting in situations where they were, they were coming down two forwards to one defenseman and trying to pass through rather than putting that puck on the net when they had a good shot. Goal scorers always shoot. No secret that the best goal scorers in the league usually have 100, 200 shots more than the other fellows. Dave Bianchi at center again for Jefferson against Wally Chapman. Now Fellman trying to center, but it was blocked by Chapman. Fed to center ice by Mike DeVoe. Now Bianchi has it again. Loses it to Mike DeVoe at the blue line. Left wing pass. Here's Carroll, and he lost the puck as he ran into Hochstein. It's fed to center ice. Fellman backhands it in. Rizut clears it. Oh, no, picking it up in the neutral zone and shooting it in. Who didn't get it in. It's blocked at center. Now it got by Ono. Here's Chapman after the puck. Nobody in front. Drops it in front. Coming up the slot. DeVoe couldn't get it, but a shot now from the point. And Razuk shot right on. Swanson dives to cover a puck. And uh, Chapman batted at it. But it got away from him. And we're going to have a face-off. Swanson. Swanson has been hurt. 
John Swanson apparently shaken up a little bit at the end of the period there. But he's all right as he goes to the dressing room. Well, there's no score. Good period. Good period of hockey and no score between Edina and Bloomington Jefferson. And we'll have to see what happens with Jefferson's uh, goalie, John Swanson. Down on the ice right now is Rob Lear with the head coach of Bloomington Jefferson, Tom Satterdolin. Rob? Coach Satterdolin, in uh, a real feeling out process in this opening period. Oh, yeah, that's very difficult the way our two teams play. I think that was just a good brand of hockey, excellent up and down. Started out, we kind of started slow. Johnny Swanson stayed in there, made some big saves. I don't mind that. Uh, he gets the feel of the game, gets involved right away. I think this would be good. It's a great hockey game. Did you have any free attentions of doing anything different for this Edina team everybody's made so much about? Well, we uh, we like to play Edina. We play them so much during the year. We play them in the past, and we enjoy it because it's such a great skating game, and you know, and people get to watch a great hockey game, and we just enjoy playing this kind of hockey. Best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Bob? Thank you, Rob. That's the end of the first period with a score. Bloomington Jefferson nothing. Edina nothing. Places like Goodhue County in the middle of winter, you learn what built Ford tough really means. I walk into my garage and my Ford is sitting out there in the cold and it starts every day. This pickup is tough. I really love it. That's a, what I call my going machine. It's the pride and joy of the farm. I value this thing more than any piece of farm equipment I have. Tough Ford trucks. See them now at your nearby Northland Ford dealer. Mike Bossy, Wayne Gretzky. These two champions chose Titan hockey sticks for their unique patented construction, for their feel. Titan, for their lightweight, for their durability. Titan, for their strength. Titan, no other stick scores like it. I'm here in the locker room with Bob Carter. Bob, those goalies are making some tremendous saves out there. They sure are, just like the saves our customers are making at the big tournament sale at Bob Carter Ford AMC Jeep and Renault. Yes, but what about the slashing? We've slashed our prices way, way down. 82 Fairmont's as low as 63.30, a new 81 Mustang just 52.21. But Bob, who do you think will win? Everyone who comes to Bob Carter Ford AMC Jeep and Renault. We're just five minutes east of the Mendota Bridge on 110 or South Robert to 110. Thanks, Bob. Now back to Al in the booth. Back at the St. Paul Civic Center, Bob Bruce along with Lou Nanny. A very evenly played period. The score nothing to nothing between Edina and Bloomington Jefferson. One power play opportunity for Bloomington Jefferson. Shots on goal. Jefferson 10, Edina 9. So as you can tell, it's pretty even. I, I think Jefferson could have done a little more with their power play opportunity. Well, they had some good chances. They had their best chances of the night. Right there, Bianchi shooting. Someone should have gone in front of the net before that. That's one thing you have to do whenever you're going to control a puck at the blue line, put the shot on net, get someone to screen the goalie. But afterwards, after the save by Galbraith, uh, Bloomington did have a couple of occasions when they were able to collapse the box that Edina plays, and every team usually plays when you're shorthanded, draw everybody back, you get the puck out in the slot. Here we have that little flurry right at the end of the period where Edina had a couple of scoring opportunities. And this is what you see a, a great deal, Bob, in high school hockey. The puck coming out to the point, the points, the blue line people aren't watched that much, so they're getting free shots on the net. That's very dangerous because you have so much confusion in front of the net. A lot of uh, people milling around screening the goaltender and they're able uh, to get a rebounder in good position to make a good chance at a goal. But uh, there Swanson was very quick to save that puck and get it swept aside. No score. Are, do you see any tightness at all on, on the part of these two teams against well, one another? Well, I did coming out uh, Jefferson in the first part of the period. I have to think that they were a little tight. They, they had to know they lost twice to Edina. The best thing that happened to Jefferson was they were able to withstand Edina's uh, early pressure, and Edina did have their best chances in the first five minutes. And after that, Jefferson started to play with more freedom, a little more at ease. And when they got the power play, 
even though they didn't score now coming out of this period zero to zero they have to have a great deal more confidence Indiana has to be happy they withstood that power play and they know that they had some good opportunities when they're at full strength a very evenly uh, played game shots 10 to 9 goal scoring chances I'd say Jefferson four Edina three in that period and that's what you really look at well, no score after one period. We'll have more between periods in just a moment. The exciting action of the 1982 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament will continue after station identification. Joy Christian Brothers Great Stick Shift. Shift to the only aluminum stick approved for play by the NHL. Christian's revolutionary aluminum shaft hockey stick is lighter than wood. And that means this stick is quick. Every aluminum shaft has the exact same weight and flex. That's consistency. Pro hockey players say it's true. They stick handle better, pass better, shoot quicker, harder, and with more accuracy with Christian Brothers Aluminum Stick. Join the shift to the Christian Brothers Aluminum Hockey Stick. Motorcraft reveals the enemy of gas mileage, fuel robbing friction in your engine. Motorcraft introduces the Gas Saver, Motorcraft's new super premium oil. It fights friction so well, it can actually save you gas. New Motorcraft Super Premium Oil. It can save you gas. Motorcraft, for the future of your car, for sure. Motorcraft 10W40 Motor Oil, 69 cents with rebate at all Kmart stores. Now, just when you need it, the home sale at Target. Accent your home with pastels, the perfect look for spring. Save on Percale No Iron Innovation Sheet Sets by Canon. A twin sheet set is now just $9.99. These 14-inch square Parsons tables complement any room. Target home sale price, two for $5. Save on these and other pastel accessories for your home. Now during the home sale at Target. Channel 5, KSTP-TV, St. Paul, Minneapolis. We now return to the St. Paul Civic Center Arena and the 1982 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Quick shot at the Edina High School marching band there as they are playing between periods. We have no score between Bloomington, Jefferson, and Edina. You know, earlier in the opening of the game, Rob Lear squeezed into an usher's suit for us. He's got a little something special for us now. He's with, now I don't know what this means, but it says he's with some painted people. We'll have to go down to Rob here and find out what this is all about. Rob? You know, Bob, this is a tournament of painted faces. And everywhere you've been around the Civic Center Arena, you happen to see all the colors displayed by the various fans. And we have the two teams represented here, Edina on the right-hand side and Bloomington Jefferson on the left. And not only are the faces painted, but notice as well that they've gone as far as to paint the hair. And your name? Dan McHenry. And when did you guys uh, dream up this concept of uh, craziness? Well, last year we had the National Guard, most of our brothers. This year we decided to just think up our own. So, say that the blue and white were our school colors. So, the blue and white express. Well, that spray paint come out of your hair. Oh, yeah. A couple washings, five or six. About a week or so, huh? Oh, yeah. All right. And the Edina's got a big contingent here. Your name? Jim Fingerman. And I understand, <laughs> and, and you guys all decided to do the same, what is uh, kind of like the same thing. Well, yeah, it was just, it wasn't really intentional. It was just kind of a great idea, and people just took it on, and that's, that's how we got here. All right, so Bob, from down near the ice, the painted people, they're having a lot of fun at this 82 hockey tournament. We'll stay in touch with all the personalities to make up all the fun. Let's go back upstairs. I'm kind of disappointed. I was hoping Rob would have his face painted up also. But we have another special guest with us, recently retired from the National Hockey League, a fine hockey player when he was playing. He's standing by right now with Bob Utek. Bob, explain. My guest between periods is a guy by the name of Dean Caliphas, who once upon a time played in the state high school tournament, went on to win a biggie for Wisconsin, and played a lot of years in the pro. He's from Hastings, Minnesota, and uh, I should say give us the applause, and we'll give him a round welcome. It's good to see you, Dean. Well, thanks, Bob. It's good to be back. Now, when did you play in the state tournament? Well, my senior class was there in 71. And that was at, at the Met. Right. And then you went on to play at... University of Wisconsin. And you scored a goal in what? The big game. Uh, the national yeah. title game. The national sure. title game, you scored the championship goal. Yes. After that, the Atlanta Flames, and then with the Minnesota North Stars, and then you 
Your career went to New York City where you played with Herbie Brooks and you just retired recently. And maybe tell us a little bit about Herbie and Mark Pavlich and Rob McClanahan and all the guys down there. Okay, Robbie McClanahan wasn't there at the time when I was there. But uh, Herb Brooks, uh, I heard a lot about him but never been coached by him. But he's made a believer out of me. He's, uh, he's a great coach. He's a hardworking coach, dedicated to the game. Very knowledgeable, and he's doing a tremendous job out there, and uh, I enjoyed my four months playing for him. And Mark Pavlich is something else. As for Mark, um, I think the world of Mark, he's not only just an excellent kid, uh, but the hockey he's been playing out there is, is just tremendous. Quickly, what are you going to be doing now, Dean? Okay, uh, right now I'm in between careers, but I have a real desire to try coaching at some level, so right now I'm just kind of talking to a lot of people and just seeing where... I might be able to fit in. And you and I are going to be opposite each other on the ice this coming Tuesday night in a, in a media celebrity game in the Hastings faculty at the Hastings Arena. That's and right. And you don't have to chase me because I can't hardly stand up anymore. Well, I've waited 11 years for this, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> well, no predictions on who's going to win that game. But I just want to tell you, we're going to wish you the best, Dean. And at this point in time, we're going to be back to the action. So we're going to give it back to Bob Bruce on the upper side and let's go. Dean Talavis, one of the nicest guys you'd re really ever want to meet. Nice to have him back home. Well, we'll be back with second period action in just a moment. This is the 1982 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Morning home delivery of the news, the instant you want it. From KSTP AM 1500. Good morning. This is Michael O'Shea along with John McDougall and John Farrell. Good morning. Rush hour traffic generally moving well. Well, a very mild forecast here in the Twin Cities. Good morning, America. At least in Minneapolis, you're looking for a man. Right now, Ray Scott takes a look. Good morning. Our sports presenter. Morality and economics on the floor of the news. The instant you want it. All news in the morning from KSTP. News Plus Radio 1500. If you're caught in a price catch 22, here's a big break. A $750 price break on every tough new Ford light truck. Yes, that's $750 on all tough pickups and 4x4s. And Broncos and Ford brakes prices on vans. $750 on all tough Ford vans. $750 off on 82 couriers, too. So get the jump on light truck prices and get a $750 check from Ford. That's big. That's now. That's Ford. Farming is a risky business. Careful. You have to carefully consider every move you make. Easy. There are dangers in expanding your operation. Risks in marketing your crop more aggressively. Watch it. A slip could mean disaster. So isn't it comforting to know you have all risk crop insurance with you every step of the way? Civic Center, Al Shaver, Lou Nanny, and yours truly, Bob Bruce, back for the second period. We have a scoreless game, a very tight game. Uh, a lot of folks probably would consider Edina the favorite uh, coming into this game with Bloomington Jefferson. In fact, a lot of folks, Lou and Al, uh, didn't believe that Bloomington Jefferson would be back in this tournament this year. Well, Jefferson uh, had to win a big game against Lincoln late in the year, and they were trailing in that game. But uh, they do have a fine team, an experienced team. They've got some real good center icemen and Bianchi, Michael Buss, and Beattie. And when you're strong up the middle like they are, and, and Swanson's played as well as he's played here yesterday and today, then he's been giving them good goaltending. They've got one of the most renowned players in the state, and Ono also. So they're, they're strong in key positions, and they deserve to be here. As a matter of fact, uh, they've got to be feeling pretty good right now. Coming out of that first period, nothing to nothing. They know they had been beaten twice by Edina, and in that first five minutes, they had to withstand Edina's most intense pressure. After that, they seem to be uh, probably having a little bit of the edge in the play. 
One thing I think we're going to have to watch for are a lot of shots from the blue line that might result in goals by either team. They're both leaving them open a little too much. You say Bloomington Jefferson probably has gained some confidence from good play in the first period. What about Edina? They go to locker room and they say, hey, we beat these guys a couple of times before and we couldn't score, them in the, score on them in the first period. Well, the fact is that they know they're a good team. They've got uh, some excellent hockey players and they probably feel that uh, they'll be sitting there thinking, well, that's Bloomington's best shot. Now we can go out there and take the lead. That's the way you usually think when you think you're a better hockey club. Second period action now, and here's Al Shaver. Ready to go for Maley and Bianchi. Bianchi has seen an awful lot of ice time here tonight. The puck back in the Jefferson zone, cleared to center ice, tied up along the near boards, and now back into the Jag zone again. It's Ono coming back of the net. Maley on him. The puck goes loose in the corner in front. Cutshell feeds the point. A shot by Brower and turned away to the right by Swanson. Tipped it with a blocking pad. The puck in the corner to his right now. And they tie it up. We'll have a face off to Swanson's right. Steve Bianchi, as uh, we were saying earlier in the first period, has proven to be one of the most outstanding players in the state. He's not big, but I think he, when he goes to college, he's going to have an excellent college career. He's got great skills, good agility on the skates, and he's got an excellent head for the game. 24 seconds into the second period. We're still scoreless here. On the face off, the puck comes right to Swanson, and he juggles it in the glove, but holds it. Well, in the game yesterday, Al, remember three goals in the second period in the Edina rochester mayo game were scored off the face off. That's one thing you've got to guard against, and mayo has got that shot right on the net. I understand there's some concern. Here's a shot right on from the face off by Cutshell, a save made by Swanson, and he goes down to cover up. There's a break in the action with the score, Edina nothing, Bloomington nothing. Elegant atmosphere, exciting menus, superb wine list, and affordable dining is waiting for you at Stone Wings. Stone Wings, Bloomington. On the face off the puck in the corner, Kelly is tied up. Mainly trying to work it loose. Now, Hochstein clears it around to the right point. Cassid putting it down in the corner. John DeVoe centering pass steered wide. And it comes into the corner to the right of the Bloomington goal. Now Cutshell is tied up by two Jefferson players as he was squeezed between Tom Kelly. And uh, helping Kelly on the play was Chris Graham. Well, both DeVoe and Cutshell doing a lot of work on the board, keeping that puck in. And that's when things get a little scary because you start controlling it there, you get people out of position. Baker wide as the shot. Hit a defender moving out Michael Bus. Now it's to the right of the goal. Here's DeVoe putting it in front, and Michael Bus failed to get away with it. A backhand shot by Chapman, and it's smothered at the left edge of the crease by Swanson. And the Hornets are buzzing. That's right, Al. They've come out with a great deal of intensity right now. They've kept that puck in since the opening faceoff, and they're getting some chances around the net. They're getting a little too close to the net, so they're easy to cover. Somebody should stand back about 10 feet and be in the open. On the face off, the puck comes rink wide to Chris Graham. At center now for the Jaguars. Moves in across the blue line. He's forced wide by Baker, but it was offside. And they've called for a face off outside the blue line. I heard that uh, there is some question whether Pat Nicoletti will be ready to play in the second game tonight for Hibbing. I heard uh, about an hour before the game started that apparently he was okay. And, and that oh. was from some Hibbing people. So I hope he is because they need him. And it's best to have your best team in there for everybody's sake to see who is the best team in the tournament. Well, Zoot firing a high shot that drops down off the glass behind the Bloomington goal. It's cleared to the left side by Kelly. Bellman checked. Feeds it to Michael Bust who steers it out and this is Graham on his off wing. Moving across the blue line against Baker. Down he goes. Got the puck out to the side of the net where it was smothered by Galbraith. And Graham picks himself up from behind the net where he fell. There's a break in the action with the score. Bloomington nothing, Edina nothing. Sign up now for a TCF pass card checking account, and Twin City Federal will give you this neat calculator free. Now, how can you beat a price like that? No, I'm usually standing behind him and telling him what, what to do. He needs directions for everything. You know, the, the, we had another case right there where the faceoff was won by Bloomington Jefferson, got it right back to the blue line to guess, and he had a good shot on net. This is the weakest either team's been 
all night long on faceoff. They've given up uh, two shots to Edina and one to uh, Bloomington Jefferson now off the faceoff. From the faceoff left point, big guess. Couldn't see the net. Dumps it around on the boards. Getters puts it in front and a good check there. The man in front of the net is knocked down as Galbraith picks up the puck. And Kassid and Beatty pick each other up as the puck was centered out front. Kassid took Beatty down to make sure he wasn't hanging around for a rebound. McCarthy and Beatty on the faceoff. Back to guess. He fires and he hits the traffic. And now Racer moving to the right corner. Trying to come in front. A backhander. And it goes rink wide to the left side. And along the near boards. Racer still battling for it. He's jammed to the boards. And got a little rough treatment there from Brower. Racer and Beatty combining last night in the same type play. Remember that? Yeah. L for a goal. This time, Racer goes in all alone. As he cuts back in front of the net, he tries to put a backhander in the net. Last night, Beatty, uh, or Bianchi, got a goal like that, and, and Racer got a rebound off Beatty and put one in. Back to the right point, Kelly, firing wide to the left. Rebounds right for Roth to McCarthy. Couldn't get it. Kelly at his blue line. Head manning to center ice now. Bianchi, and Bianchi takes a shot from Brower at the blue line. The puck taken over by Vacanti. Back in over the Bloomington line. Forced to the right corner by Kelly. Put it in front. Hit a skate. Comes back to the net. And Kelly now being checked and tied up. Falls. Still trying to play the puck. Reaching for it. Can't get control. The puck comes to the right side. And a freeze attempt is voided by Vacanti, who dug it out of Bi 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 Bianchi's skate. Now it's back of the net. Cleared around on the left side. Comes out to center ice. And the Jaguars get possession. It's backhanded in by Bianchi. He and Brower after. Bianchi there first behind the net. Checked by Kassid. Kassid falls. Bianchi's pass off a skate. Back to Guess. And he booms a shot wide. Oh no, at the right point holding it in. And a centering attempt is blocked. And Cutshell comes away for Edina. But he's tied up as he comes to center ice by Graham. And I'll tell you, this Jefferson team, they're checking. Really working hard. Here's a chance for Graham. He fanned on it as he overskated it the first time. Wheeled and quilled to make contact with a backhander. Now he puts it up the slot. It's picked off by Maley. Maley coming in over the blue line, working against Guess, and Guess staples the Mono back for the puck. Clears to the corner. Pass to Bo. It's back to the blue line. Baker with a long shot. And Swanson steers it away to the right board. Cutshell poking at it, but Ono picks it off. Clears it out on the far side. Razut is forced back. Fellman taps it loose. Razut takes Fellman out. Baker comes back after the puck with Michael Bust behind the net. Baker tying up Michael Bust. And they whistle it down. We'll have a face-off to the right of the goal. There's a break in the action with the score. Nine and nothing in Bloomington. Nothing. Take some advice from Dave Lennox. Talk to the heating and cooling specialists here. Or call the professionals at this Lennox dealership. Do it early and save. Face off to the, to the right of Kevin Galbraith. Beatty's draw comes back off the boards. Hochstein coming back for it. Takes a bump from DeVoe, Mike DeVoe, who's on now. Now it's fed to the right side. And here's Beatty trying to get by Baker. Leaves the puck. It's poked in front of the net by Racer, but... Broken up by Edina, and a long pass comes out off Carroll. Kelly playing it off the far boards into the zone. Razut failed to get a stick on it. It's back of the net. Racer goes down. Now the puck in the left corner. Here's Chapman coming back for it. Chapman going around behind to the right circle. Got by Beatty. Comes to the blue line. Swings by another check. Racer hit man's on the play. Carroll right circle. And his shot is blocked by Kelly. Moving in. Baker a shot. And that hit his own man, Carroll, in front. Razout fires, and he's wide with it. Puck along the boards to the right of Swanson. And it's in the corner now where it's picked up and cleared by Kelly. Picked off at center by Chapman. Goes by Hochstein. Now he's forced wide by Kelly, a centering pass, and it deflects into the right corner. Fed into the slot again by Carroll and picked off. Cleared to center now. Baker at his blue line, feeding a pass to the right side. It's relayed to Chapman. He lost it, trying to get by Hochstein, who pokes it to center. Bacotti had a whack at it. Now Bianchi is brought down. Back in the neutral zone. 
And finally, Hochstein gets off a shot, a long one, into the pads of Galbraith. A clearing attempt blocked by Bianchi, a shot. Oh, and he shot it just wide to the right. A good chance for Bianchi. Had to hurry the shot, and Galbraith didn't give him much on the far side to shoot at. We have icing call. Well, Bianchi's feeling that puck. Had a real good opportunity. He went in all alone on Galbraith, but he just missed the far corner. Bianchi all over the ice for Bloomington Jefferson again tonight. Very dangerous out there. Extremely quick. He's able to steal that puck very, very well. Here's the occasion where you're going to see Bianchi take that puck away right here on the fan pass. He just blocked the pass and then took a shot and missed the far corner. Dynamite weighs 150 pounds for every 5 feet 8 inches. That's what Bianchi is. Yeah, but he plays like 200 pounds. He's really an excellent hockey player. Very skilled, very quick. The key in little people are is when you see them along the boards, if they've got good balance and can come up with that puck, that's a great asset because that's usually their weakness. He, he can come up with that puck along the boards. Face off to Galbraith's right. The Yankee and McCarthy. They'll do it again. 9.32 remaining in a scoreless second period. We've got Mariner from White Bear against the Blue Jackets of Hibbing in game two tonight. Gilbreth was just giving McCarthy a little idea what to do on that face-off. We now pause five seconds for station identification. This is the 1982 State High School Hockey Tournament. The Minnesota State Hockey Tournament is brought to you by KSTV your DTV, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Channel 5. China attacking from the face-off. McCarthy's shot goes wide. Off a defender along the near boards. McCarty putting it out in front. Picked off by Ono. A long clearing pass off the far boards. Kassid skating it down in the Hornet zone. Comes to the left circle. Now feeds a pass on the right side. It's chased by Roth at the blue line. Picks it up. Moves into the circle. Puts it back in front. Nobody home. In from the near point comes Brower. A centering pass. McCarty a shot. And he shot away to score. The puck came in just over the blue line. Rolf got that rebound Rolf. from the Tommy shot. Paul Rolf. Swanson got a piece of that puck, but it just dribbled in a goal similar to one we saw last night. He had a piece of it, just couldn't quite control it. Here it is. Rolf came in. Rolf's down behind the net. Look for him. Here's the pass across. There's the shot coming up by Rolf. And watch it. Well, we can't see from that angle, Lou, but I think from another angle, we'll be able to see it just dribbles in. Right. Uh, perfect Bacani, angle. <laughs> here's the perfect angle. But Connie had an excellent chance there. Missed the net. Rolf just spun away, got free, and he got it right between Swanson's legs. And there is dribbled in right behind right there. The, right oh, behind beautiful. the fight. The key in that play, though, was uh, the shot by Brower, the pass across to Bacani. He had everybody pulled to the left side, including the goaltender. Bacani missed a wide open net, but the rebound came directly right back to Roth. He spun away, got free, and let that puck go quickly before Swanson could get set and dribble into the net. Bacani gets the only assist on Roth's goal at 6-0-1. Brower, Brower should also get an assist on that one. Yes. He made the key play. Puck shot in by Jefferson. Cleared to the far side, but held in now. Into the corner, Feldman. Feeding back off the boards to the left point. A shot right in front, and Feldman tried to work and lose, but Galbraith covering. Shot from the point by Hochstein. There's a break in the action. The score, Edina 1, Bloomington nothing. The Minnesota State Hockey Tournament is brought to you by your nearby Northland Ford dealer, who invites the class of 82 to stop by and test drive the sporty new EXP. Play underway in the Edina zone. Hornets in possession with a long pass to the left, too far for Cutshell. Kelly turning inside his zone, putting it out on the left side for Fellman. Graham coming on the right. Michael Bust, the trailer, failed to get anywhere with it. And DeVoe fires it down the ice. And that sends the Jaguars back with Kelly coming behind the net. Runs into a check from DeVoe. Knocked him off balance. And again, we have a problem with the goal. Well, we, when we were talking about the goal before, and we said, geez, it's a good idea. Everyone's probably seeing, well, why don't they do it in the National Hockey League? The reason why they don't do it is because too many players take advantage of it, and they'll knock the net off whenever they, there's trouble around the, the goal. There's a penalty called when that happens in the National League, but you could do it with sleight of hand where penalties wouldn't be called. They're looking at a Swedish uh, type uh, uh, 
peg right now that's the fiberglass and that might resolve the problems and prevent injuries and at the same time keep the net in place a little bit. Knowing Lou, you, Louie, you'd have magnets installed <laughs> over the goal so that if you get, the team got in trouble, you press a button and off comes the goal. You move them. You'd think of something. Not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Shot in by Bloomington. The puck in the right corner of the Dyna zone. Brought back to the net now. Hornets on a one nothing lead. It's cleared to center and Ono fires it back in. It bounces off. Beatty back in the right corner with Razut coming back for it. Back of the net stops for a look. Nobody to his left. He's got a man in the right corner, and that's where he goes with the pass. Now it's relayed to Maley in the slot area. Long pass. We'll go the length of the ice, and we'll have an icing call. 7.38 to play in the second period. And there's a break in the action with the score Edina 1, Bloomington nothing. This Minnesota State High School hockey tournament is brought to you in part by Northwestern Bell, who remind you, keep in touch with friends and relatives with long distance. to the right of Galbraith. Chapman taking the draw with Beatty. It's back to the point. Guess firing it around on the board. Comes to the left of Galbraith now and it's cleared out to center right. Guess poking it back to the blue line. Kassid has it down the right side. He's bumped off the puck. Guess taking over just inside the Jaguar line. Comes to center. Shoots it in as he's staggered on a check by Carroll. Now Kassid on the right side. Feeding a pass. Chapman works by one man, then runs into Sullivan, who lost his helmet, but he stopped the attack, and it shot right back into the Edina zone to the left. Brower playing it off the boards. The helmetless Sullivan requires a pass off the boards. Put in the slot area. Bianchi couldn't get control of it, and it comes out to center rice. Carroll trying to break loose foul and lost the puck, and they could have had a three-on-one if he retained it. Back in comes Sullivan. Stumbles on a check from Brower, puts it in front. Here's a chance to score! All tied up and Grand goal! Kyle Grand! Bloomington comes back to try it. A beautiful play, and what set that goal up was Sullivan. Sullivan setting up Kranz as we look at it again. Look for Sullivan, number seven. Down along the boards, the pass across. Kranz is out front, turns around, makes a nice turn just between the legs of Kevin Galbraith. Sullivan fighting off the check from that defenseman right here, was able to get that pass across, and both Edina players looking at the puck rather than taking the man, and the puck just bounced over the stick right to Franz. Franz puts it away. The game now ties one to one. Fine goal by Kyle Franz. An excellent play by Terry Sullivan. Fighting off that Edina defenseman coming along the boards and making the play. 8.17 the time of the tying goal. Both Sullivan and Steve Bianchi get assist on the goal by Franz. Bianchi facing off with McCarthy at center. Score deadlock to the goal apiece. Now at Hoekstein, clearing back out of the Jaguar zone. A pass to left, Kranz with a shot, and a feed from Bianchi. Now it's played back of the goal, Kranz digging again, comes to the left circle. Puts it in the slot, Bianchi's well covered on the play, drops it for Kelly, but it's picked off, and it's cleared to center. McCarthy now, relays it to the right, gets it back. He's got McNaughty in front, but the play's offside. Referee right on the line, call that offside. A fine three-on-two play, but a good play by the Jefferson defenseman. Just getting a stick on it, knocking that puck just back enough so that it slowed down the Dyna winger going offside. Excellent play by the Jefferson defenseman. Yes. Carthy getting the draw from Michael Buss. The puck is shot in by Baker. Behind that at Ono. Around on the left now. It's held in at the right point. Razut's drive goes wide right off a stick. Now Graham dumps the center. Baker in possession to Razut, his defense partner at the blue line. Shoots it in long. Swanson blocks and sweeps left. Ono comes back behind. On the right to Graham. Dumps to center. Baker picking it off. Michael Bust is on him, but he managed to work it away from Michael Bust. It winds up at the Bloomington blue line. Guest poking it out. Michael Bust. Holding it away from McCarthy, now feeding it ahead for Fellman. Fellman coming in, Baker takes him out. The puck at the right point, Ono with a shot. It goes wide left as it hits somebody in front. Now on the right side, it's cleared up the wing. A relay, rink wide to the left. The wing is open as Picotti has gone to the bench on a line change. And now Ono moving in. Ono going in deep to the left against Baker. Forced back of the goal by Baker. Comes right over skates. Now he's tied up by Rizzo as he tried to come back for the disc. 
We'll have a face-off to the right of Galbraith with 5.19 left in the opening period. It's tied a one-all. Make that the second period. And both clubs, Al, a little bit excited. Their passing is not as sharp as it normally is. All game long, each club has had the opportunity to make a good pass, and they're either a little behind, a little too far ahead. As we look at Ono trying to catch his breath on the board, uh, on the bench there, but each club overpassing or underpassing a little bit too much and cutting down on their opportunity. Now they puck shot behind the net. Members of both teams go down behind the net as Kassid fell over the Bloomington player who was already on the ice, but Beattie gets back and comes right back into the action as Maley moves in. He's squeezed out in the defense. Puck goes to the far boards. A centering pass comes rink wide. Here's a drive right on by Brower. Swanson turns that away to his right. This is Cutshell trying to put it in front. He falls over Kelly, who's down at the right edge of the crease. And we'll have a face-off as the puck is underneath. That's one thing about having size in that net. Swanson's able to stand up there with people falling all over them. When you're big and strong and get good position, you're not knocked off your feet as easily, and you could stand up in that net when play gets a little confused around you. 4.50 remaining in the second period. Won all the score as Bianchi's back on. They'll go with Maley in the right circle. Each coach not worrying who they're playing against whom. Bianchi was out last time. His line was out against McCarthy's line. Now he's out against Maley's line. Which means each club just going with a fresh line. Doesn't matter who they're playing against. Not trying to match lines at this time. Tuck down. Cleared to the near boards by the Jefferson defense. Now just inside the blue line, Sullivan dumps to center. It's tipped off a stick back into the Dyna zone. This is Brower coming back, pursued by Kranz behind the net. Headman's into Maley, skates, digs it out and fades to center for DeVoe. He lost it, but Maley picks it up and carries on. Good move, moving up the slot, he fires. And the puck goes off Ono, stick and out of play behind the Jefferson goal. Both defensemen, and Ono in particular, standing right in front of Maley, not allowing him anything to shoot at, and as he was getting ready to shoot, just getting that stick out and deflecting the shot up and over the glass. Face off at the top of the circle. Chapman on to take the draw with Bianchi this time. Chapman got a shot off, but it was blocked. Cleared now by Guest to the right side. Sullivan relays for Bianchi. Couldn't get control of a bouncing puck. Carroll plays it along the blue line to the far side. It's held in right on the line. Shot around behind the net. Ono clears it to his right. Sullivan has it at the blue line. Fires it. It goes by Razout. And he turns and comes back behind the net to get it. Being checked on the play. But the puck is cleared on the right side. A rink-wide feed to Carroll on the left now. Over the blue line. Carroll moving to the right corner. Fires. And covering the short side. Swanson made the save. And then he... Grabbed the puck and held it, and it was tipped back up right into his glove. He'll face off uh, to his right with 3.51 remaining in the second period. The score tied 1-1. Here's a shot from Carroll from the side. The defenseman wisely keeping him on the outside. Kelly not allowing Carroll to cut inside. Carroll really didn't have much of an angle. Swanson played that puck easily and just closed it. Michael Bust against Chapman. Michael Bust controls. Beats it ahead. This is Chris Graham on the right side against Baker. Baker takes him. Down goes Graham. Baker tied up by Graham as he went down. And we have a whistle. And they'll take a face off where the play ended. The puck winding up between the two players. Under the two players. The face off will come about 10 feet inside the Edina blue line. Oh, Baker right there taking the man outside also. That's one thing both defensemen or each defenseman on uh, both clubs are doing. They're keeping the puck here to the outside, not allowing him to cut inside. When he cuts inside, he's much more dangerous. Now the Jaguars get possession, but Kelman is tied up. It's cleared out by Rizout. Jefferson putting it back into the zone. Baker turning with it. Bank pass off the near boards. Graham shoots it back, hitting Baker at the blue line ahead to Vacanti. Vacanti worked it by Graham. Got it away from Michelson. Moving in now, and it's broken up by Kelly, who swept it off his stick with a sweep check. Kelly going to the left corner. Hit Manning on the wing. Feldman banking it out off the boards. Rizout backing up. His pass stolen by Graham. Graham got Michael Bus. Pass to Michael Bus, but he couldn't reach it. Pursued to the far boards. Roth and Michael Bus go in hard. Now here's Kelly after the rather uh, Feldman after the puck. Puts it down in the corner. It's fed back to Beattie who's on. Drop to the left point and a long shot. 
And it goes wide. Hochstein shot from the left point. Buck comes back to Hochstein again here. This is Michael Bus firing, and the shot is right on, and Galbraith blocks it and holds on. And looks around. Galbraith not sure where that shot was. A real fine shot from the defenseman Hochstein. Galbraith falling to make the save, and he just lost sight of it momentarily. Here the puck getting back by Bianchi. Shot on net, and look at Galbraith look around. He doesn't know where it is. But right on his doorstep, Spellman hoping for an open, a loose puck. Nate Jockety, our assistant here, just pointing out how well the forwards are really coming back to help on the breaks both teams avoiding breakaways now here's a chance Mele in too deep puts it in front it went by Ono it comes to the near boards a shot right on by Brower and it's juggled and now it's held by Swanson as he sinks to his knees and two big men Guess and Mele doing a little bit of bumping in front of the net well, Guess protecting his goaltender. You don't know if that puck's going to get loose or not. And he saw Maley standing there, so he gave Maley a shot. And that's what a defenseman's got to do, make sure that he ties that forward up. You'll see the shot, and that's Maley going for the rebound right in front. Here comes Guess. He's going to get over and clear him out of there. Good play by Guess. Maley, Maley 6'2", 195. And Guess is no small man, 6'3", 195. Now play in the Dyna zone. On the near side, a racer goes down as he was bumped on the play. The puck comes out to center ice. And here come the Dino Hornets on the attack. A backhand shot by John DeVoe goes right across the front of the net. It's cleared to center ice. Racer after it along with Maley. It's knocked back inside the Bloomington Blue Line. Guest passing out on the right for Getters now. Getters drives it in. It, it hit Brower on the way. And now Maley picks it up behind the net. Maley on the left, it hit Carroll in the back of the skates. Maley follows up, and a quick clear to center high. It's batted down in the neutral zone. Kelly tried to shoot it in, but it hits the traffic along the boards, which tied up by Brower and Bianchi. We'll have a face-off in the neutral zone. It's still tied, one all, with 140 remaining in the second period. Each club there making sure that whenever you're tired and you're fighting for the puck along the boards, you might as well get a face off and get a line change. When you're out there when you're tired, that's the chance when you will make a mistake and it's going to prove to be costly. Got to keep fresh people on the ice. Kelly getting the puck from the face off and driving it down into the Adina zone deep behind the net where it's cut off by Galbraith. Baker coming left, stopping. Into the right corner for Rizout. He's checked there by Kranz. Kranz feeds back up the slot. A backhand shot. A scramble in front. And Galbraith covers it. Good scoring opportunity there as Bianchi almost stuck it through. Well, a real good scoring opportunity. It all arose out of the opportunity that Jefferson created by their forecheck. And here you're going to see the pass come out in a backhand shot as both Bianchi and uh, Sullivan go to the goal. But... The Dyna is getting a little too high, and their defenseman can't get the puck out to him, and he, Jefferson's able to steal it. Drive by Hochstein, hits the traffic, and rebounds to center. Kelly back for it, dumps it back inside the blue line, and Baker feeds Rizout on the right, head mass to the blue line. Now this is Chapman going to the right side, and taken out by Hochstein. He lost the puck. Mike DeVoe dropping it back at center. It's relayed to the left. Now Baker drives it off Sullivan's stick into the Bloomington zone to the right as we're down to 55 seconds. Carroll now in the right corner. He was checked by Sullivan. Gets the puck again, puts it in front, and at the left side, it comes close again in the slot. Mike DeVoe had a chance there to the left of the goal, and now he's been fouled. He's been slashed on the play, and we're going to have a penalty. Mike DeVoe drawing a penalty as he tried to work that puck loose at the left of Swanson. And then started back on the play. He was slashed by Kyle Kranz, who has the Bloomington goal, and Kranz is going at 14-18 for the slash. And Bloomington wants to make sure that they don't surrender a goal with just 42 seconds to go in the period right now. This is a time when you want to make sure you get out of the period, the tied 1-1, don't get that other team momentum, and nothing does it better than scoring a goal. A Dino on the power play with only seconds left in the second period. Long pass off the near board. DeVoe lost it as he tried to get by Kelly. Nicely broken up by Kelly, who comes back to the net, plays it off the boards, past Rizout, and he'll skate it down back in the circle to the right of Galbraith. We're down to 20 seconds remaining in the period. Rizout sliding it to the left now. It's played out to center by Maley. Skates around Feldman, picks it up, moves into the right circle, a shot. Pad saved by Swanson as he hugged the right pipe, the puck back in the near corner. 
And this is Fellman tied up in there. Kelly comes in, takes out the Edina man, and it's cleared now by Fellman down the ice. And there's the horn. That's the end of the second period with the teams tied one all. Well, Bloomington Jefferson, I'm sure they would not like to have a penalty like that at the end of the period because now Edina is going to have a, a key advantage going into the final period of play. They will be on the power play. The game all tied at one to one. Let's see what uh, Coach Willard Eichela says about that and, and what he thought of his team's play in the second period. Rob Lear is standing by live with Coach Willard Eichela on the ice. Rob? So far, Coach, a real defensive battle here. Well, it looks like a real tight skating game. Uh, looks like a 50-minute hockey game right now. We got about, uh, let's see, 118 in a power play. I hope we can cash in there and get ahead of them. It's, it's going to go right down the wire. This one's going to be a tight one. Uh, you've beaten Jefferson twice this season. What did you do then that you maybe are not doing yet here tonight? Well, the first time we beat them, uh, they didn't have a couple of their big uh, horses. Uh, Bianchi was out and Ono was out, and, uh, and they're the heart of that team. Second time we did, uh, when we beat them 6-3, they were just back. They just came back for maybe this is their second or third game. So uh, they're playing a lot better right now than uh, they did early in the season when they had some of their defeats the, uh, because of the injury problem they had. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bob, back upstairs. Well, that's the end of the second period with the score. Bloomington Jefferson won. Edina won. It's your old furnace, and its appetite is costing you more and more every day. Your Lennox dealer can tame your heating costs with a new Lennox Conservator Gas Furnace, the most efficient gas furnace yet. I'm Dave Lennox. Ask Don Bell of Fred Boat Company to install your new Lennox equipment. Or, if you live near Red Wing, the man to call is Dale Thompson at Sylvander Heating. He's my dad, my dear old dad, the only mom I've ever had. It wasn't easy on his own, so he held my hand till I had grown. My dear old dad, I love him so. Well, I sure hope you're taking good care of my grandchildren. Don't worry, Dad. I had a very good teacher. Reach out, reach out and touch someone. Motorcraft reveals the enemy of gas mileage, fuel robbing friction in your engine. Motorcraft introduces the Gas Saver, Motorcraft's new super premium oil. It fights friction so well, it can actually save you gas. New Motorcraft super premium oil. It can save you gas. Motorcraft, for the future of your car, for sure. Motorcraft 10W40 motor oil, 69 cents with rebate at all Kmart stores. Some men never ride with the pack. Now, for them, there is the Nighthawk. A motorcycle so different, it looks like you own the only one. Looks like Jake's going home. I don't think so. Jake lives that way. The Nighthawk by Honda. See the new Honda Nighthawk at Honda Town and Rapid Sports Center. two periods of play we have a tie hockey game it's one to one shots on goal Edina 14 Jefferson 8 one penalty in that second period and Louie could turn out to be a big penalty as Edina will be on the power play going into the third period the first goal of course scored at 601 it was Vacani out to Paul Roth and the puck just sort of dribbles in as Edina takes a one nothing lead well you saw right there Brower passes across to Vacani he should have gotten assist at 12 on the play Vacani missed the wide open net the rebound came right to Roth he just got it right between Swanson's pads as he was moving across. Goaltender Swanson right there, trying to get in position. Not quite there, and Puck dribbles in, and that gave Edina the lead. Oh, just when you thought Edina had the advantage, Bloomington Jefferson came battling back. The player without a helmet, number seven, Terry Sullivan, out to Kyle Kranz. He scores to tie the game one-to-one. -one. Well, Sullivan fighting off a check from Brower. They're coming along the board, pass the puck across. The puck was bouncing. Both Edina players right here will look at the puck. Rather than taking the man, it bounces over their stick. Kyle Kranz took the puck, 
whirled right around, didn't look, and that's what you got to do. Just put that shot on the net when you're being bothered and you never know when it's going to go in. It went in there. Lou, the penalty coming at 14-18, just prior to the ending of the period. Really not a good time to take any kind of a penalty. No, it's not, but Jefferson got out that part of the period, and that's got to give them a little lift. They still have to go out and kill a minute 18 in the third period. Edina's got to work that puck in a little better. The shots were 14-8 uh, for Edina, but there's a perimeter around the net right out in front of the net, which are the real good scoring chance areas that you can get into. Edina's not getting there. Their shots are from the outside, from the angles, are easy for the goaltender to handle. Jefferson hasn't had as many shots, but they had more good shots from that area. This is something Edina's got to work that puck to the middle. They're all getting a little too close to the net. No one out three, 15 feet in front of the net to get a good shot. No one out there to catch a big rebound. That's right. Well, we're tied 1-1. We'll be back with more between periods from the St. Paul Civic Center. The exciting action of the 1982 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament will continue after station identification. Now you have power back, you told me. It came on about 10 minutes ago. Thank goodness. <laughs> it's been an adventure, kind of fun. We um, had time to play games with the kids, and we sat by the kerosene lantern and, and listen I have to say thank you to CCO because immediately at 930 when the power went off we got our portable radio and we um, turned on CCO and that's been our constant companion and for the weather reports for what to do uh, where to who to call in case of trouble or you know you begin to wonder well am I doing the right thing and then we felt confident that we were doing the right thing so thanks to you guys really I can't tell you how much it meant to hear your voice real, real, so real. In places like Goodhue County in the middle of winter, you learn what built Ford Tough really means. My family's in the dairy business, and we have a lot of Fords. My brother John has two. My brother Dave has two. My dad has four. And I have two, including this Bronco here. Why, we have almost as many Fords as we do cows. What America's looking for, the Northlands found in Ford. Channel 5, KSTP-TV, St. Paul, Minneapolis. We now return to the St. Paul Civic Center Arena and the 1982 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. You know, this tournament is a sellout for each and every game, for each and every day, every year. But, you know, even if the fans didn't come to this tournament, you could just about fill this arena with the college coaches who come and try to spot some talent that's going to help their team. Ed Cairo is standing by live downstairs with one of those coaches. Ed? Jeff Sauer of Colorado College, you couldn't hear that, but I had it in my earphone. He said if the fans didn't come and fill this place every year, the coaches would. <laughs> and that may be true. You're looking at an awful lot of hockey talent here. Uh, that's some excellent, uh, excellent talent, Ed. It's, it's really enjoyable to watch these players in this type of a setting with the pressure and the, uh, the, the scouts. You talk about college coaches. You should see the pro scouts sitting in my <laughs> section. They're, they're all over the place over there. Tell us about Colorado College. You've got a lot of Minnesota boys there. Well, we had 14 players on the team this year from Minnesota, and we, we recruit very heavily here. I'm from St. Paul, and uh, I've always grown up with the Minnesota players and so forth. But we, uh, we have a commitment to American-born hockey players, and we try to, to bring the players from this area out there to, to enjoy the mountains and enjoy the, the hockey. But uh, uh, being a member of the WCHA is a plus for us because we're only a school of about 1,800 students, so it makes it a, a difficult situation. We don't have the numbers that a Wisconsin or Minnesota has, but uh, uh, academically, we have a very excellent school, very fine school, and we go to school a different way. A player just takes one course at a time and uh, doesn't take the five courses at a time like a, like you would at a Minnesota or a Wisconsin. And uh, uh, they take it for three and a half weeks. At the end of three and a half weeks, take a final exam. They're through with that class for the year. So it, it's a unique way to go to school. It's a small school, but we play big-time hockey, and that's, what is, that's important also. And your kids graduate. Well, we've had, uh, we have eight graduating seniors this year. We have a graduation rate of close to 90%, and that's, uh, uh, we have a commitment to the academics first, uh, uh, with, along with a fine hockey program. And yes, we have graduated players. We, we do every year, and it, it's been very good for us because uh, they get a good education along with playing hockey. Jeff, they're asking us to go back. Uh, I'll ask you quickly. Scotty Bowman made a comparison between American and Canadian hockey players, and you do uh, grab some every year. Uh, what do you think? 
well i think the big difference the only difference really is experience they play more games in the than the high school kids here do here but the talent is every much as good as a canadian born player jeff sar colorado college thanks for being with us bob back to you speaking of talent you know up on the range the name hooper is synonymous with ice hockey because the hooper twins well they play for the Hibbing Blue Jackets, and they are really setting this tournament on fire. If you were with us last night, you know how exciting their play really is. Rob Lear is standing by right now with the Hooper Twins. Bob, watch closely, because later we're going to ask you to uh, identify these two guys. They look a lot alike because they are. They're identical twins, and you are? Greg Hooper. And, and you are? Gary. Which one of you two are older? I am older by 12 minutes. Do you hold that against them? No. Not at all? No. These guys are so identical twins that they had the same goal scored, same assist for the season, as well as last night, they each scored a goal apiece. One of the only guys from Hibbing that can keep these two guys uh, one and a, apart from each other, can tell them apart, is Bill Olson, the assistant coach. And what is it, Bill, about these two guys that you can tell them apart and everybody else, the teammates have to keep referring to them as Hoop and not use any first names? Well, I've known them uh, since they were three years old, coming in like two little gophers around the rink, peeking over, looking at George and I, and. Uh, Kind of baby talk, saying hi, coach, you know, on their own. Uh, I won't mimic them. It, they've, uh, there are a lot of things uh, about them that uh, if you really look at them, you can tell the difference. Except their extrasensory perception. They have some uh, amazing uh, abilities as far as uh, when one's back's turned, you can see it on the ice, they'll pass, and for some reason, uh, you'll receive that, and you ask them why, you don't know. and. If you can ask any one of these other kids, uh, you'll talk to one about a specific subject. And the other one picks right up on it, huh? Right, and five minutes later, he'll come over and answer the question. And it's kind of weird sometimes. And Appreciate you taking the time. Run out of time. I know there's been a little bit of talk about uh, health conditions. How are the teammates tonight? Tonight, we're all fine. Everybody's healthy and ready to go out and beat Mariner. No flu? No. Nope. Okay, great. Thank you both, Hooper Brothers. Bob, back up to you. They are definitely identical twins. We'll be back with the final period of this game between Edina and Bloomington Jefferson. Jefferson trying to defend their title. This is the 1982 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Comfort and luxury are back. And in places like Brown County, Thunderbird is leading the way. I love my T-Bird. Everybody else loves it too. I'm a very proud owner. I drove by one day and I saw the T-Bird sitting there and I thought, I've got to go back and take a second look. So I came back with my girlfriend and she said, just take it on a test drive. So we did. And that was love at first sight. I just had to get it. <laughs> is a risky business. Careful. You have to carefully consider every move you make. Easy. There are dangers in expanding your operation. Risks in marketing your crop more aggressively. Watch it. A slip could mean disaster. So isn't it comforting to know you have all risk crop insurance with you every step of the way? what KS95 FM is all about. Number one stereo music. Music and minute by minute changes in weather. And you can expect a whole... Music and weather and a whole lot of fun. You just won KS95 FM cash call. Bell fans, we won! We won! KS95 FM, the most listened to music station. Under the sun. machines back live at the st paul civic center there you look at just a few of the fans the many thousands that have attended so far in fact a total of 50,283 have passed through the turnstiles at this point and i'll tell you each and every year it just amazes me they seem to get more and more people 548 fans ahead of last year's pace i don't know where they put them but they seem to get more people in here every year 
They're making them smaller so they get two to a seat. <laughs> Everybody's losing weight. <laughs> Well, we've got one more period of hockey to play, and then we will have decided one of these teams, Edina or Bloomington Jefferson, will advance to play for this year's 1982 High School Hockey Championship. Well, Bob, you forget. We've seen so many overtimes. We have maybe much more than a period to play. And the way they're both going at it, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw an overtime. However, Edina's got the opportunity right now to score. They've got a power play for a minute and 18 to start the period off. A very crucial time for Jefferson. They sure don't want to get behind in the first minute of play in the third. Well, I guess John Swanson and Gold is just going to have to strap those pads a little tighter and try to hold off the Edina Hornets. Third period action in Alshaver. Kyle Kranz has a minute, 18 seconds left in his penalty as we go to the third and final period. Tied at one. The puck shot down the ice by Ono. Galbraith didn't try to cut it off. He lets it come to the right corner. Razut has it now for the Hornets. And uh, pass is blocked. It's held in the zone. Now deflects back to the blue line. Bianchi clearing it back into the neutral zone. The pass held in nicely. Now, Edina trying it again with a pass on the left side. It's brought in. Here's a nice move by DeVoe. John DeVoe getting in front, but broken up by Swanson, the goaltender. Now back of the goal, it's Kutchell feeding the right point. Rut Rizut having trouble, and it came out over the line, and he tapped it back in offside. The referee right on the line saw the puck come out. Rizut tried to control it and went right off the stick and as it was just sailing back to the blue line Mailey made an attempt to keep it in but it did come out he's got a face off outside the blue line Puck comes into the neutral zone Razut now passing ahead a steer to the right side cut shell moving in got turned back drops it back to Chapman back out to Razut at the right point heading for the slot now into the left circle Chapman puts it up high and it goes to the left point now as they keep it in back to Rizout to Chapman, deflected away from him as he ran into Kelly. He feeds it back to Rizout, and it comes on out to center ice, right, and Rizout has to chase it. Coming back deep to the right of his goal to recover the puck. Takes a look from behind the net, comes back out on the right side. Now bank pass off the boards, John DeVoe. Working against Kelly, and now goes over to Ono's side of the defense. Ono running him to the boards. Puck comes back in the net. Ono takes position, loses to Cutshell. Cutshell now is tied up by Chris Graham and Ono will have a faceoff again to the left of Swanson and they're back at full strength. The penalty on Graham has expired. There's a break in the action. The score is tied. Bloomington 1, Edina 1. The Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament is brought to you in part by Micron Skates and these fine dealers. Stop in and see what makes Micron great. From the faceoff, the puck comes in front, and McCarthy doing a nice job of working it in front, and now Vacanti on the far side tied up, and Bianchi brings it out for the Jaguars, firing it down the ice, and coming back for it, Brower behind his net. Brower comes to the right stop. Rink wides a pass on the left side now that is stolen away by Bianchi to Sullivan, bowled over by Brower just outside the Dina blue line. Vacanti failed to clear. Bianchi stealing it, going to the corner, checked by Brower. Brower falls, pass back to the right point. Ono to the left point. Guess moving into the near circle. He shot off a stick and is picked up back in the net by McCarthy. McCarthy on the left side got by Bianchi. His pass goes by Vacanti and comes out to center ice. And now it's shot back in by Ono and giving chase on the right side. Sid puts it out to center. Broken up. Back in come the Jaguars. A backhand shot. And down goes Graham sliding into Galbraith as he made the save. And they again push the net up off the post. And we'll have a stoppage for a quick repair job on that. Nice shot of Don Satterdahl and the head coach of Bloomington Jefferson on their bench. A replay of this once again. And thank goodness the net is the way it is. Because watch this as he hits that pipe. Boom right there. If that had been a the big professional pipe that you're talking about, Louie, could have been an injury. And that's why the faceoff comes out, because he, Bloomington Jefferson knocked the pipe, uh, the net off the mooring, so the faceoff comes outside the zone. A fine try, though, by Graham, but a real good play by Galbraith, the goaltender holding his ground. 12-20 remaining. Mike DeVoe shoots it in, right corner. Carroll is after it, but Graham is there to cover. Comes back in the net, lost the puck, and then Carroll loses to Kelly. 
Kelly on the far side. Out at center now, shoots it along the far boards. Galbraith cuts it off this time behind the net, but it's picked up by the Jaguars, brought to the near corner. Michael Buss to the left point, and the shot by Hochstein is blocked, deflected wide. Now back to the left of the goal, a centering pass goes off a skate as Fellman put it in front. Shot back of the net by Hochstein. Fellman is jammed to the boards by Baker. Chapman getting the puck in the left corner, sidestepped one check as he got by Graham. Pokes it ahead, but he's off the mark for Carroll with the pass, and now Kelly puts it up out of play, and we'll have a faceoff just outside the Bloomington blue line. The score, Bloomington 1 and Edina 1. There's a break in the action. The score tied, Edina 1, Bloomington 1. Elegant atmosphere, exciting menus, superb wine list, and affordable dining is waiting for you at Stone Wings. Stone Wings, Bloomington. Play underway at center. The live action, Beatty poking it in, and he goes down as he runs into Kassid. Cleared around behind to the left side now for Cutshell. He sidesteps one check as he got by Racer. A pass to center is picked off and shot right back in by Guest. Left corner now. It's taken over by Cutshell. Cutshell bump, but he clears the center. Mailey picked it up. Plays it by Racer. Picks it up. Moving in. He's got DeVoe with him. Lost the puck. DeVoe turns and was cracking up for a slap shot when he got hit and knocked down from behind by Ono. Big key defensive play there by Ono. Now Ono breaking up the play again or trying to as he threw a check, a centering pass. It concludes in the slot. A backhand shot by DeVoe and that's turned aside by Swanson. Now the puck is cleared down the ice, and they're going to call it back for icing. 10.35 left to play in regulation time. There's a break in the action. The score, Edina 1, Bloomington 1. Now, just when you need it, the home sale at Target. You'll discover bargains for all around your home. For great savings, shop the home sale through Saturday at Target. Face off to Swanson's right. Puck comes in front, and it's cleared to center ice. Now along the near boards, puck is poked loose, and Rizout beats a pass that goes by Roth. Fired back by Hochstein into the Dyna zone to the left. This is Baker coming back for it. Round behind for Rizout. It hit the back of the net and deflected away from him. Now Kranz plays it back of the net. Baker coming out to Galbraith's right. Cut right in front of his net. Bianchi was there, but he got by him. Bianchi sticking with him, giving chase. Pokes it ahead into the zone. Kelly will try to clear. Fails. Another clearing attempt by Hochstein is blocked. It's still inside the blue line. From the point, a shot hit the side of the post by Baker. It's still in that zone. Now the Jaguars in possession. The puck is knocked loose off the stick, and Baker has it at center. His pass to Bacotti broken up. Baker back in his own over to Rizout. Headman's to center now. A relay to the right by McCarthy to Roth. He puts it in the zone. Michael Buss comes all the way back to the net. Aids the far ring to the right. And a long clearing shot bounces by Rizout who comes back for it to the right of his goal. Pursued back of the net by Michael Buss. Comes out to the left. Headman into Roth. A perfect pass right on the blade. In over the blue line. Roth in the left circle. Shoots his goal! Roth! His second goal! What a good play by Roth. He throws that defenseman. And a nice shot by Roth as he comes in on Swanson and beats him to the wide side as we look at it again. Roth down by the boards. Look at him right to the wide side on his stick side. And he beats Swanson for the goal that you see puts the, him up by a score of 2-1. to one. You see the defenseman pull his stick into him. That was a fake shot. That's what was the key in the play. Roth came down, he faked the shot. As soon as the defenseman commits himself, he can't move laterally. And right here, watch him pull his stick in right there. That throws the defenseman. He was able to move outside and hit the far corner. And he really threaded the needle with that. Up to that point, Bob, you see him on the bench a little excited. Up to that point, he was having problems moving that puck up ice. Great work downstairs. Three different angles of that goal and what could be the winning goal. As well, Edina leads it 2-1. to one. A little too early for that, though. 9-10 left. And the way Jefferson's been going, Edina forward putting a lot of pressure on their own defensemen because they're flat-footed up too high. And up until that point, Jefferson was doing a good job of forechecking. 
5.50, the time of the go-ahead goal by Paul Roth, his second of the game. Tom Rizout got the lone assist. We're underway again with live action at the Civic Center in St. Paul. Puck in the neutral zone. Now comes back into the Dyna zone. Kassid clears to the left. It's relayed out to center ice. And now Michael Buss starting back in. Fades a pass to the left. Here's Graham's ba backhander blocked by Kassid. Graham after it again in the corner. Still Batley put it in front, and it's cleared away. No, it's still in that circle to the right of the goal, and now it comes back to the blue line. A long shot by Gass is off Galbraith's glove into the left corner. Back of the net to Fellman. His pass blocked in the right circle by Mike DeVoe. He overpasses Chapman, and now the Jaguars try it again. Oh, Brower throwing a crunching check that took Graham down. Graham up and has the puck. Pass hit a skate. It's loose in the circle. Ono couldn't get possession. Now he ties up Chapman. The puck comes out to center ice, and the Jaguars dump it right back into the right corner. Picked up in the corner by Cassid, and he's tied up by Beatty, and that forces a face off to the right of Galbraith with 8.01 remaining in regulation time. There's a break in the action. The score of the Edina Hornets, 2. The Bloomington Jefferson Jaguars, 1. At Midas, we stock over 800 kinds of mufflers. The only time we'll stock just one kind of muffler is when there's just one kind of car. Just the Midas touch. You're going to see Ono, our, our uh, Brower there, lay a real good check on him, and he got up and played that puck again and got checked again. Razout rounding his net, pulls away from Beatty at the blue line. Pass on the left side, pursued by John DeVoe. Kelly trying to check him, deflects the pass, and now it's cleared to center by Racer. It's Beatty picking it up, but then losing it. And this is Maley coming in, and out comes Swanson as the puck got loose. We've got a pile up. Maley with Swanson on top. It's back to the point. Rizzuta shot. Hit the traffic in front. It's still in front. And now Cutshell's pass to uh, flex wide to the right. Picked up in the right circle, but Hochstein couldn't get away with it. Now it's on the far side. We've got one man playing without a stick, and it's Gaders. Getters playing without a stick, and Cutshell comes back in the net, feeds the right point for Rizzuta. Across the left point, the shot by Baker, a boomer. And that, Kadir's blocked it, and he kicks it out to center ice. And now goes to the bench for replacement. Getter's doing a good job uh, playing soccer out there. Now the puck comes back inside the Bloomington blue line, but we have an offside call with 6.55 remaining. Well, Getter's made an excellent play there. Defenseman Kelly had lost his stick. He was playing without the stick. Kadir has spotted it. Any time your defenseman loses his stick, the forward should give it to him because he's closer to the bench and he doesn't need it as much in front of the net. Getters gave Kelly the stick and he still went up front, blocked the shot and got it out of the zone and got a line change. Face off outside the Bloomington blue line. 2-1, the Dyna. Puck shot into the zone that's offside and we'll have another face off outside the blue line. That last minute was Edina's best minute this period. Uh, Jefferson has been playing pretty well. Edina came down for the goal, but Edina smells blood now, and they're working much harder up front than they were earlier in the period. Way underway. It's back to Brower. Fires it across the blue line. Blocked and cleared by Guess. Relayed off the left wing boards, and Kassid puts it back out to center. Ono feeding to his left. Franz dropping to Guess. Guess shoots it in over the line. Kassid clears it, and it goes into the penalty box right below us, and that stops play. We'll have a face-off in the neutral zone. There's a break of the action. The score, Edina 2, Bloomington 1. Win a one-week vacation for two anywhere under the sun. Tell us where in the world you'd like to go. Listen to KS95 FM. Bianchi batting down a high pass, and he comes on the far side, tried to put it in the slot, but it's broken up and cleared by McCarthy, who goes after with Ono. Now Ono gets it back at the blue line. It's knocked back into the Jefferson zone, and this is Guess banking off the boards to Sullivan. He relays it to the Dyna line, and Brower drives it back down the ice with Swanson, steering it away to his left. Guess playing it off the boards. Picked up just inside the blue line, Bianchi down the left side. Fires it into the right of the goal. Back for the puck is Rizout. Rizout sliding a pass. Good move by McCarthy to get by Feldman. Now he's tied up by Sullivan. Sullivan has lost his stick and goes to the bench for a replacement. 
Now Rizzuto at center, Huckstein at center, a long shot right into the midsection of Galbraith, and he bends over, trapping the puck with his glove. We'll have a faceoff to his left. Well, Mike McCarthy, who you were just talking about, made that good move, playing on the line with Vacanti and Roth. Got their lines got both goals. Not as much a heralded line, say, as the other two lines of Edina, but they did the damage yesterday against Mayo. They got the two goals in the third period, and they've got both goals for Edina tonight. 5:42. That's what's left, barring overtime. Shot from the point, blocked, and a relay goes wide to the right of Galbraith. Now on the near side, Mike DeVoe failed to get out as it was broken up by Michael Bust. In the corner, Fellman back for Michael Bust. Shakes off one check from Mike DeVoe, comes to the corner, pass blocked by Rizzout, poked in behind by Galbraith. Jaguars keeping it in with Feldman now coming to the left side, playing it to the far wing, a drive by Graham. It goes rink wide across the front of the net. At the left point, Hochstein banking it in, but it's cleared out over the blue line, and here comes Chapman now, and he's squeezed out along the wall by Michael Bus. Puck cleared back out of the Bloomington zone to center. Rizout, a bad pass. Baker has to chase it. Michael Bust is on him. Forces him to the boards. They both tumble and fall, and Rizout picks it up behind the net and slides to DeVoe on the right. DeVoe relays to Chapman, knocked off his stick by Graham. DeVoe lost it as he ran into Graham. Loose puck inside the blue line, Rizout poking it out. And now Mike DeVoe fires it in off the boards. Behind the net, Swanson missed the cutoff. Here's Carroll in the right corner, puts it in front. Swanson steers to Kelly. Kelly comes back of the net. Kelly head manning on the left now. It comes out to center off racer stick. Picked up on the fly by Beatty. Beatty runs into a check at the blue line, bowling over Kassid. Puck is held in the Edina zone, a shot. Getter's getting it again. Now he's checked by Carroll. They both go after it in the left corner. It's centered out in front and it's picked off in the slot by John DeVoe. Over passes Maley. Guess now playing it back in the neutral zone. Swinging back to get it is DeVoe. DeVoe fires it back into the Jefferson end. Just over four minutes remaining as Guess head mans to the blue line. Beatty sliding it to the right too far for Getters. And Brower drives it back into the Jefferson zone. Swanson putting it in the left circle. Guess feeding Ono on the right. Pass to center. Tipped away from Bianchi and shot back in now by John DeVoe. Ono missed it behind the net. It goes to the right board. Sullivan playing it back of the net. Ono coming out to the left. Band on a pass but kept the puck. Now feeds it ahead. It got away from Bianchi. Cleared to center. The Jaguars coming right back in. It was offside apparently. Trans Just is offside. by a hair and a nice move by Ono. Looked like he was going to come in for a good chance but it was offside. Kyle Kranz had already made the play over the blue line, tried to get back, couldn't get back in time. Of course, don't forget, coming up immediately following this game, we've got the Hibbing Blue Jackets against the White Bear Mariner Dolphins, and that's going to be just as good a game as this one has been. There's 3.30 left. Louis, at what stage would you consider pulling Swanson if About you were Tom uh, Saturday? A minute, minute, uh, 10 seconds. He's got a lot of time yet. Long shot into the Bloomington zone by Rizout. The puck back of the net now. Fed to the right side. Off the boards. Baker back at his own blue line forward. Over to Rizout. Shoots it in. It comes to Swanson. Hochstein picking it up as it rebounds off his goaltender. Comes back of the net. Plays it to the right. Chases after. McCarthy there first. Tried to feed the point for Baker, but it's intercepted. And Jefferson attacking. Broken up at center by McCarthy and Vacanti, but Sullivan gets it back. Shoots it in. Baker knocked it down. Checks Bianchi. Now Carroll and Bianchi tie it up along the boards. And we'll have another stop stoppage and a faceoff just inside the Dyna blue line. Now that's, that's a good question. When do you pull your goaltender? In a situation like this in high school hockey, you're allowed to just cross your own blue line and throw the puck down. So you really have a much easier chance to get the puck down the ice without icing. That's why I'd wait until a minute and ten. Pro hockey, I might go 10, 15, maybe even 20 seconds earlier than that. But because you don't draw icings as easily, I, I would wait until a minute and ten. From the face off, the Jaguars hold it in. This is Bellman losing his helmet, battling for the puck in the left corner now. Checked there by Brower. His pass picked off by Chapman. Chapman shakes off one check after running into Michael Bus. Comes to center over the blue line. Puts it in front. A shot by Carroll. He shot it wide. Trying to put it in front was Mike DeVoe, but he fired it into the netting behind the net as he crashes to the ice with Chris Graham back at Swanson. And uh, Chapman, as you said, shook off a check. That's been his strong point all through this tournament. He is so strong on his skates, they don't knock him down. 
I very infrequently have seen him get knocked off his skates. Here it is again, Lou. This is uh, later on after the play by Chapman, but he is. He, he's great at handling the puck, no doubt about it. And he made a fine pass there, just threaded the needle uh, to Carroll. Carroll taking a shot, and DeVoe tried to jam it in the short side, but he was too far past the pipe. 2.22 left for the defending champions to knot it up. Puck cleared off the boards. Shot back now by Cassid. Cleared again to center ice by Holkstein. And now Kranz with the only Bloomington goal firing high off the glass. Carroll on the far side dumping a pass. It comes out to center ice. DeVoe picking it up on the right. Backhands it into the Bloomington zone to the right of the goal. Adina making a change on the fly. And it's broken up at center. Shot right back in by John DeVoe. Swanson behind the net. Leaving it now. Kelly around on the right. It got by Sullivan. Mealy drives it back behind the net. Hochstein poking it away to Kelly in the right corner now. Banking a pass on the wing to Sullivan. Knocked off his stick by Mealy. He and uh, Bianchi tie it up just outside the Bloomington blue line. And that's where they'll face it off. And they are now down to 133. But the face off in such a position that they can't pull Swanson. Well, now you've got to see whom uh, Willard Eichler, coach of Edina, considers his best defensive forward. Because after this line change, he should be down less than a minute. And your best defensive forwards and defensemen should be on the ice if you're going to try and protect that lead. Back in the Bloomington zone, cleared to center, and now it's shot right back in by John DeVoe. Guess to Ono and back to Guess. Guess at center. Comes over the line and broken up there, and John DeVoe forces Swanson to stay on the ice. Uh, made him, wait a minute, we have a whistle. Icing, and a very costly icing at that, because John DeVoe was only one stride away from that blue line. He could have gotten over the blue line and iced the puck. This brings the faceoff down into the Dyna zone, a minute 16 to go, and you don't want to be taking faceoffs down in your own zone when you're leading by one. Tommy Satterdallen taking a look at the clock. Now having a conference, but plays underway back of the net. Michael bust over, skated. Razut clears to the right, and it's poked past Guess and down the ice by John DeVoe. This is Ono back. Ono to Guess in the neutral zone. Swanson looking to the bench, and now he's going. Has it shot into the zone. And it winds up in the mesh behind the Edina goaltender, Galbraith. It went in there off his stick, so the faceoff will be in the Edina zone, and 54 seconds remain in which to settle it. One thing Galbraith should have done there, not nonchalant of that puck and try to play it. He should have left that puck in perfect position for his defenseman to skate and get it out. Now you're drawing a faceoff in your own zone. If you look at the goaltender, he's got his head bowed, just wishing he doesn't want to look for the last 54 seconds. A very tough time. Face off to Galbraith's right. Six blue and white uniforms packed inside the Edina blue. Line. Oh, it's going right to the face off. Grand. Grand. Fired it in on the face off. We've got a tie game. And the Jaguars have got new life. 51 seconds remaining. 14.09. The time of the goal. And Kranz has his second of the game. Lou, you mentioned several times in this game about how important the face-offs really are and how many goals were scored yesterday off the face-off. There you see that's a little faster than normal speed, but exactly what you were talking about earlier happened. The puck was brought back from the face-off and Kranz, a perfect shot. The Yankee got him the draw. And that was Michael Bust getting the draw back. And that's why you don't want to have face-off in your own zone. Michael Bust, a right-hand draw, pulls to the slot area. That's why you have Michael Bust face-off there instead of Bianchi. Because he's going to draw to his backhand, which is in the shooting area. And that's where Kranz was, and he got it. It seemed like he got just three-quarters of that puck, but enough to put it in the net. Very costly face-off in the Dinah zone at that time. Now we've got a tie game, and as we said at the start of the period, we may be going into overtime unless we have a very late goal. Well, it's not often you see a team cash in when they pull their goaltender. Usually they get burned, but this was one of the rare exceptions when it works for them. 2-2. 51 seconds remaining in regulation time now as we go to the center ice faceoff. <laughs> Change the assist officially as Louis reported they would. It goes to Michael Bust instead of Bianchi. Now the puck in the Edina zone. Bianchi getting it out of the slot and hit a stick and comes out to center. Guess picking it up in the center circle. Duono on the right now. 
Back on the left, Kranz plays it down with his hand, moves in, and he lost it trying to get by a defender, broken up by Kassid. The puck's still in the zone. Kranz, a shot. Rebounds up the slot off Galbraith. Picked up and cleared to center on the near side by Roth. Roth and Kranz have each scored twice. They've done all the scoring for the two teams here, and now Galbraith covering the puck at the left side of the crease to force a faceoff with 12 seconds remaining. Well, Gilbreth couldn't do anything but freeze it there. His defensemen were a little tired. They wanted to go off, and they didn't hustle back to get it. And again, as we've reiterated before, we don't like to see faceoffs in any team's defensive zone when you get late in the game because that could prove costly. That's what happened on the last goal, and this is something where Jefferson, with a great deal of momentum after scoring, has the opportunity to pull ahead. 14.09 was the time of that tying goal. Now the puck in play in the Dinah zone. It's back of the goal. The Jaguars in possession as it's brought to the near corner. Michael Bus centers and it goes rink wide. Here's Ono driving. And it's blocked and the horn sounds. That is the end of regulation time and we will go to sudden death overtime with the score nodded at two apiece. Well, it's been an even game throughout. Al and Lou. Uh, I don't know, Lou, would you think that Jefferson, by scoring that uh, goal so late in the game to tie, would have a, a bit of an emotional uplift going into the overtime? Well, I think they do, Bob, whether they're going to win the game or not. But uh, you can't help but have an emotional uplift when you're scoring so late in the game when you have to pull your goaltender and you get the opportunity to score a goal and you cash in on it immediately. This is uh, an exhausted Jefferson and the Diana team that you're going to see in the third period. They played at a very, very high pace, somewhat tentative in their passing. Overall, I've seen these clubs before. They passed the puck better than they've showed in the first and second period, although they got a little sharper in the third. But right now, we've got uh, the coaches and trainers going around. That's Ono, who's seen a great deal of ice time in this tournament, sitting down there in Mailey and, and, and uh, Brower. That's Captain Brower, defenseman, two people that see a lot of ice time. Well, they get a little bit of a rest here before they go into that sudden death overtime. The shots, Edina 28, Jefferson 24. It's been an even game throughout. Uh, the best game that we've seen definitely so far in this tournament. Well, these clubs, as we said before, have no played each other, known each other. They've got a big rivalry going. Jefferson, the defending state champ. Edina with two wins over Jefferson, but Jefferson not having their star players early in the year. The Edina players resting for the sudden death overtime. One of these two teams will go on to the championship game tomorrow night. Rob Lear is down on the ice, and I believe he has Tom Satterdahl in before that sudden death overtime. Rob? What a lot of character by your kids. You pull your goaltender, you get the equalizer. Well, we got to get one more. One more, then we'll, then we'll be happy. Well, we're, we're playing good. It's a super hockey game. I love it. Just a great game. You're right in the emotion right now. Did you feel it was going to come down to this? Well, we knew it was going to be a good hockey game. We knew it was just two good teams playing together, and the fans are seeing a great hockey game. Did your players use the rest right about now? No, no. We're ready to go. All right, Tom. Thank you very much. Bob, back upstairs. You know, Lou, what I like about Tom Satterdahl, and he just loves this game. He's not nervous. He's just really enjoying it as much as any fan in the stadium. And let's go down to the highlights now and take a look at it once again as Bloomington Jefferson comes back to tie this game to put it in the two to two sudden death overtime. This is Edina and that's Roth. Roth making a good move going to the outside and hitting the far side. Swanson a little deep in the net just giving him a, about two three inches to hit and that's where he made the play right there. Roth when he froze defenseman went to the outside and hit the far post. This put Edina ahead two to one but then Jefferson after putting on a great deal of pressure and goaltender Gilbreth who's had an outstanding night was beaten on that shot off the draw. Kranz getting the draw back from Michael Bus with 51 seconds to go in the game to tie this game. There's a good shot by Kranz. He never waited. He just got it away quick. And as we said, he really didn't get a great deal on it, but he got it so fast coming through traffic that the goaltender didn't have a chance, went right through it by the time he saw it. Both goaltending, both goaltenders having outstanding nights. They've been tested a great deal and from real good positions, but uh, I'd have to say that they've just acquitted themselves extremely well. So we hope it's a good goal that wins this game because both goaltenders have played very, very well. What a game that young man, number 15, Steve Bianchi. You saw him briefly at Jefferson. What a game he's played. Really good play at each and every position on the part of both teams.
faceoff. The puck comes back to the Jefferson blue line, knocked into the zone. John DeVoe, that circle, broken up very nicely on the play. Here's a chance for Mealy, a shot. And that's blocked at the left side. A centering pass goes rink wide. Sullivan in the corner. Checked by DeVoe. The puck back to the point. Brower trying to hold it in and does. Now it's cleared to center ice. Three on two breakout. In over the blue line. Sullivan puts it in front and it's cleared away. Out to center ice by Cassid. Now Guess cranking up for a long shot that is blocked, but we have an offside call. Terry Sullivan has gone in real deep. He wasn't able to get out in time. And as Guess put it in, he was just approaching the blue line. Didn't get out in time, so he's got an offside and a line change coming up. Design is going to stay with Maley's line, though, Al. From the faceoff, Maley unable to get possession, but Brower fires it into the Jefferson zone. Hochstein coming back behind the net, bringing it around on the left side. At the right point, it's held in by Cassid. A long shot would have been off the net, but Swanson reaching outside the left post spears it. Uh, we now pause five seconds for station identification. This is the 1982 State High School Hockey Tournament. KSTP-TV, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Channel 5. 7-16 remaining in the first sudden death overtime session. Face off to the left of Swanson. Razout tried to hold it in but couldn't. And now down the left side. This is Feldman putting it right in front. Oh, and it broke it up there. Unable to hold it was Graham. It's centered out in front by Graham. And back come the Dino Hornets. Baker in over the blue line. Left circle firing. He's wide. Goes to the right of the goal. A centering attempt hit the side of the net. Now DeVoe, Mike DeVoe tried to put it in front. Kelly picks it off, comes back in the net. And on the left side, he clears to center. Razout trying to dump it back in, but it is blocked now. It comes loose. Here's Chapman going in too far. Back of the net, puts it in the right corner. Carroll after it. Banks it off the boards. Back to Baker and his shot. Winds up in the left corner. And it's promptly cleared all the way down the ice by Hochstein, and we have an icing call with 6.28 to go. Well, Rizout made just a great play to get back and stop uh, Graham, and then as we go down the other side, Wally Chapman walking in all alone, just didn't get that puck on the stick. The goaltender holding his ground, and just no chance for Chapman. Look at this, a fine pass, and Rizout coming back just got a stick on it before the shot was made. A fine play by Jefferson there. Way underway, they puck cleared to center. The Hornets in possession. Roth, who has both Edina goals, backhands it in. Swanson steers left. Guest comes back behind around the getters on the right. Banks it out off the boards. This is Beatty tied up by McCarthy. And now Beatty getting it back as McConty falls and gives it to McCarthy, and he clears it out off the boards. Getters takes a swipe at it, and it goes out of play. 2-2 two -two with 6-0-2. Remaining in overtime. From the draw. That comes back to Guess. Toots it in. It's batted down. Turning with a Brower to shake off Petey. Brower coming to center now. Dumps it in on the left wing side. Bacanti tied up now. And it's McCarthy trying to feed the point for Brower. He falls along with one of the Bloomington players. Oh, no, back for the puck behind the net. Clears to the right for Getters. Beatty on up the ice. Pokes a pass too weak. Never reached Beatty. It was picked off now by McCarthy. Gave it to Roth. Got it back, but it's broken up inside the blue line. Getters puts it out to center. Baker's pass. Getters overskates it. But following up on the play, it's brought in by Ono. Ono falling. And the puck is cleared out to center ice, intercepted by Bianchi. And Bianchi shoots it back in, but he traps a teammate offside as Ono is still in the zone. Ono getting caught a little deep after he had been taken down along the boards, got up, and boy, was he carried working hard trying to get out of the zone. He just didn't get out in time. We've got that offside. A defense pair for Jefferson, Ono, and Guess in a lot of ice time here tonight. 14 now as the puck goes rink wide back inside the Edina blue line. Baker clears. Now Kelly to Hochstein. Shoots it in. He hit Rizout. Here's Bianchi getting a shot. And Galbraith over at the right post took away the short side and made the save. Now it's Maley trying to get by Sullivan. Long left wing feed. Cutshell chasing it. Kelly is on him. A centering attempt hit the side of the goal. Maybe the post. Bianchi in the right corner tying it up. And they'll face off to the right of Swanson. 
And look who was there, Bianchi. He came all the way back because after Maley made that fine pass, a long pass, he followed the play up. He would have been in position to put that puck away. Bianchi working hard as he's been doing for the last two days. An outstanding player at number 15. Came back and checked Maley and got the face off back there. Maley, a big, strong sentiment for Edina. Moves that puck very well there. And here's Cutsall cutting the outside with the puck coming free. And here comes Bianchi and Maley after it. That's cuts all cutting in for the net. Just put the puck on the net when you've got nothing to do with it. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. Hits the side of the net and bounced out right there. And that's Bianchi coming in, backing it up the way a centerman should. Ready to resume play with a faceoff 10 feet inside the Jefferson blue line. Now they puck is brought out at center ice as the Jaguars try to get something going. No one to pass to, so Michael Bus dumps it in and it's cleared now. That center Maley runs into a check tore the glove off the checker as he ran into guest tuck it back in the Dino zone a shot from a sharp angle goes back of the net behind Galbraith Graham unable to put it on from the angle he was in too deep and now Rizut comes back to cut shell in his off wing moving in left circle the shot hit guest gets it back go back of the net cut shell out in the right circle to the blue line to Baker right point to Rizut cranks up fires he's upstairs with it it's into the band I think a tuba player just swallowed it <laughs> With the help of Fellman, Fellman coming out, knowing that there's a lot of traffic in front of that net, Al, he just fell and blocked that shot by Rizout. It hit his pads and went up over the glass, but a real great defensive play by Fellman. Even the forwards are blocking shots at this stage of the game. They don't want anything to get through to that net. Race off inside the Bloomington Blue. Tucked back into the circle to the left. Hookstein backing up to the corner. Banks it off the boards. Chapman unable to control for Edina. It's fed to center ice now. Picked up now. Brought in on the near side by Racer. He's checked. Knocked off balance on the play by Cassad. And back comes Wally Chapman. On the right to Mike DeVoe. Moving into the zone. Forced wide by Holstein. A centering pass is picked off. And here comes Beatty. Down the left side. Lost control at the blue line. And it's cleared out to center ice by Brower. A rink wide pass to the right. Driven in now. To the Bloomington zone by Cassid. Carroll going in hard against Kelly. Kelly shakes off the effects of that check. Tries to freeze. Carroll leaning on him. And they'll face off to the right of the goal. Kelly showed a lot of poise. Not only that time, but his shift right at the beginning of the period. When he came out, he came around the net. He had two four checkers on him. He looked both ways. And he made a fine pass up the middle. A lot of poise by the Jefferson defense. Under good pressure from the Edina forwards. There, especially that man you just saw, Carroll. But when he got in there, the first man took the body, and that's what he does. He took it real far. Bianchi facing off with Chapman. The puck goes into the corner. This is Ono. Put it right in front of his net. Guest taps it in behind. Ono clears on the right. Sullivan has it. Sullivan's pass picked off by Chapman. Waits for a man to clear the zone. But by the time Carroll got out, he was checked and lost the puck. And now Carroll knocks it in and then heads to the bench as they make a change on the fly. Guest rounding the net. Coming out on the left side now. Jim Guest cutting back to his right. Oh, goes by a check on a nice move against McConaughey. Moves in deep to the left. Guest poking it out with one hand of the stick. It's in the slot. Here's Franz with two. Back to Oh no, his shot hit a skate. It goes in the left corner, and Baker has it. Loses out. A centering pass hit Rizout as Franz tried to work it in front. It comes to the near boards at the blue line. Held in at the point now by Guest. As he blocked McCarthy's clearing attempt. It shot around behind. On the left side, Baker tied up. It comes in the left circle right in front. Here's Bianchi poking at it. And a deflection to the right corner. It's cleared to the line. Guess Bell reaching for it. Couldn't get it. It comes out to center. Oh, no. Backhands it off the boards into the Dina end. Rizout comes out and fires it down the ice. It winds up back of the Bloomington goal. Members of both teams charging after it. The puck poked into the left corner. Bacotti trying to get it loose for a Dinah, but it's frozen there by Guess, and they'll face off to Swanson's left. It's still tied at two with 208 left in the first overtime. And big Jim Guess going off the ice, leaning over, made a fine length of the ice rush. Went around to the outside, and he centered that puck. And Jefferson with two or three good chances, puck deflecting all around the net. Finally had it cleared out by Edina. We've got a face off in Jefferson's zone. That comes to the near boards, cleared to the line. It will be held in by Cassid. Now John DeVoe off balance. Reach got it. Over to Cutshell. Working against Kelly. His pass off Maley's stick. Maley drops the stick as the puck comes back to the goal. Now it's fed up the left side by Fellman. And here comes Michael Bus in over the blue line. 
Horse to the near boards, and he's stapled there on a good check by Kassid. Mailey playing it around behind, and then bowling over Graham as they made contact. Brower works by one man, shaking off a check, but his short pass to the right got by Mailey. He swings over to pick it up and loses it at the blue line. The puck loose at center. Kassid feeding Brower, getting it back. Kassid's pass comes into the Jefferson zone. Off the stick of Fellman. Now Fellman tapping it out. Kassid waiting for a man to get back on side. His pass is now picked off by Fellman to Michael Bust. Over the line, cranking up. His shot comes in front off Kassid's leg. It's cleared into the near corner. Sullivan in there for Bloomington, but he can't reach the puck loose as it was tied up by Brower. Well, they'll both clubs right now feeling the effects of two tough games, and especially this one. They're all going off the ice extremely slowly, bent over as, as he is right there. The you see Getter, while well, they're all tired, they're all feeling the effects of the tension and the pace of this hockey game. On the faceoff, Edina coming out now with Carroll to Mike DeVoe over the blue line. Drop pass, Chapman, shot, he scores! Chapman wins it for the Hornets! As we said earlier, we wanted to see a good goal win it, whoever won it, and that was as fine a goal as you're going to see. A good three-way passing play, an excellent play by DeVoe to Chapman, and a good shot by Chapman. The goaltender was no chance, Bob. Well, it was a pass that set up Chapman. He's, he's played a good game, and he's great at handling the puck and has some super moves. All he needed was a good pass, really, to set him up. That's right. He did make a good pass coming up the ice, too, before he took that return pass. And as you said, he's played a good game. You like to see people that work that hard get an opportunity. Whoever's going to win it, you want to see the good players score a good goal because that's the way games should be determined. An excellent hockey game, a tremendous effort by Jefferson. Here's the three-way passing play. As you see, DeVoe getting a pass there, going around the outside, and then he's going to drop it back. He had taken a pass from Carroll, dropped it. Chapman from the top of the circle, a good low shot on the far side. And the little key right there, Chapman's a left-hander. He's on the right side. So he's got a better angle when he's going to shoot the puck. A good draw pass by DeVoe. A shot you see what Wally Chapman sees. He's, he's a lot of net because he's got the pass on his left side, and he's able to hit the far corner. So there'll be a new champion this year in high school hockey, Bloomington Jefferson. Now eliminated, Wally Chapman scoring in sudden death overtime. That's the end of the game with the score, Edina 3, Bloomington Jefferson 2.